who's ready for some learning. It is. It is time for CBT. I hate you for making that joke. I, I hate you for making that joke. <laughs> I hate you for making that joke and making me have to title my stream actually that. Give me a sec to just get to the uh, training room and get everything back to default because I just realized I uh, have stuff on non-default switch skills. So I want to show uh, defaults first, it would make a lot more sense with someone who is new. What's wrong with CBT? Everything is wrong with CBT. Absolutely everything is wrong. Wait a few more minutes with some uh, people trickling. I don't want to start uh, and then just like be very people confused to start. There we go. Everybody see everything? Uh, I guess you can't really see uh, my inventory, but that's fine. You don't need to notice. You don't need to see the inventory. Uh, where's the extra wire bug? No money. Actually, a good question. Where is the extra wire bug? I would like it to use. have unlimited settings. I can, but uh, I think that would... Actually, let me just double check. It wouldn't show how many wire bugs it uses. I would assume. Yeah, it doesn't show how many wire bugs it uses. I think you ate something bad. I noticed that earlier. I was watching you. Uh, you said something was wrong. Are you okay? Feeling okay, Pen? Oh, you can, you're right. Okay, that's useful. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> Don't die, Pen. Okay, let's see here. Let me get my uh, pallet messages and thing to sit over here because I don't want them interrupted. There we go.
Okay. I think we're uh I think we're ready to learn. Okay. So, uh I've not really got a uh, like a I've not got like a list or anything. I'm just gonna do a scuff way, uh just do it as I go. So we're gonna start with the very basics, okay? So this is a charge blade. Right? Charge blade. Uh it's got a sword and a shield. Now I like the sword and shield though. This thing has a lot, a lot, a lot more to it. Like sword and shield, pretty complex, but this is I would say the most complex weapon in the game. And I think a lot of people would agree. Alright, so here's the basics. So if you just press X, right? Try a weapon. It's like every other weapon. Right? Normal, normal things. If you uh move and press X, you'll do a forward slash. So this is actually really useful. Uh, the forward slash in general is extremely useful. It's a really good gap closer. Uh, you'll be using a forward slash a lot. Uh, however, generally, I tried to play your action one of those weapons that doesn't um, sheath a lot. <laughs> so it's it's weirdly uh, enough you don't sheath a lot as charge blade. Generally, through a hunt, you will like basically never sheath, never sheath unless you're uh, trying to drink potions. So the reason being. Look at the put away time on that. It's insane. <laughs> but great sword, you got a whole three levels of charge. Well, this is a this is a char charge blade. This is, this is a great sword charge. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, move on. So we got basic moves. Okay, so our X combo is this. So you go, you do a weak slash, and you do a return stroke, and you do a spinning slash. Now you will basically never use this. This combo is basically never used. The X combo for the Charge Blade uh, is essentially almost never used because it doesn't do what you want uh, for the weapon. Uh, in which that is usually uh, to like charge. It doesn't work for damage, it doesn't work for charge. So it's just generally a combo that you never really use. Uh, so, you know, if you... Really, uh, yeah, don't use that move. <laughs> don't use that combo. If you uh, press the R, you can guard because you have a shield. Just try to play. So the guard, this is a, it's actually a pretty decent guard. It's a middle tier kind of guard. So it's not as strong as lances or uh, gun lances shield, right? Those are the uh, strongest shields in the game. However, it's not as weak as sword and shield shield. So it's got a middle ground to it. Is it spinning slash 360? This thing? Which I want this? This is actually... I'm not sure, actually. That's a good question. I don't think it is. <laughs> it is not 360. The spinning slash is not 360. I'm, I'm, pressing, I'm pressing backwards at the moment. It's not 360. Yeah. You generally don't use that combo. Okay. Now here is where we go into some of the more useful stuff. So you hit A, you get this attack. Now, this isn't very impressive, right? I'm spamming the A button. This is not very impressive, right? I'm pressing A, I'm pressing like X or something. Okay, maybe, you know, there's not much you can go from here. Uh, the reason being is that this is actually a charge attack. So this is just me spamming the button or, or just pressing the button once, right? Be very, very like, just a normal slash. Not, some, nothing too impressive. However, um, this is where it gets interesting because this weapon, this attack is actually a charge type attack. So if you hold the button, well, there I held it too long, so there, or it went back to charge one. But if you actually hold the button and then let go at the right time, generally that's where it flashes. So if you notice, flash, you get two slashes. Now this is your bread and butter attack in sword mode. Uh, because number one, it deals a ton of damage. For its uh, for its animation commitment, this is a lot of damage. Number two, this charges uh, your sword. This charges your files the fastest in sword mode. This is the move that charges your files the fastest. Now, you might be asking me if you're new to this weapon, what are files? Uh, what am I charging? Well, if you look at the top over here, you'll notice I have these little cases. 
uh, in the top near my sharpness gauge and underneath my stamina bar. Right now they're red, uh, but earlier they were white. They went from white, yellow to red, which I can actually uh, check to you in a sec. So what do you do with those? Well, um, when those files or those little containers, which we call files, are red color, we can uh, do something called charging our, uh, well, storing our files, not charging your shield. Uh, we can do something called storing our files. Now, how to do that is you press guard. Okay, so you hit ZR and you press A. That charges your files. Now, if you notice, those uh, little, little containers over there, our files, have gone from red and back to white. However, they are now filled. So, you might be asking me, what can you do with filled files? Well, there's a, many things you can do with filled files. Uh, mainly, though, you use them uh, when you're in axe mode. Now, you might be wondering, hey, <laughs> you store files in a filing cabinet? If you consider your shield a filing cabinet, then yeah, sure, go ahead. You can consider that a fi <laughs> files in a filing cabinet. Okay, so you might be wondering what do those files do? Now that I've stored. Well, the main use of them is to use them in axe mode. Now you might be wondering, what is axe mode? If you never heard of this weapon, you wouldn't know what it is. Because like, look at this, this is a sword, this is a shield. Where's the axe? Now, the great thing about charge blade is it's actually two weapons in one. And this is where a lot of complexity comes in. So, if you hit ZR, okay, right? If you hit X, so to store our files, we hit A, right? So to store our files, we hit A, right? Uh, we don't have these files to store, so it's a slow animation, but if we hit ZR and hit X instead, we go into a morph slash. Now, look at this. Our swords and shield have now combined, and they have now created an X. Now, in axe mode, you're a lot slower, your rolls are kind of, you know, kind of stinky ro rolls. Right? You know, our mobility is really chunk, like, like, kind of, kind of eh, right? But, in axe mode, you can... Use files to deal damage. Now, if you notice, one of our files is missing now. Uh, I hit the A button, and that went me into, uh... I think it was called Element Discharge 1. Yeah, oh, so that's called Rushing Element because I was walking forward, but if you're just standing still, it's Element Discharge 1. They're basically the same thing. Uh, the one, two that I just did, is one of them is just I was pressing forward. One I was pressing forward. So, if you notice the hit that I do, well, first of all, I hit the monster, and then secondly, there's a little explosion. That explosion is the file. So, see that 9 damage? That was a file. Now, if you notice, I have no files anymore because I spent them all. So if I were to hit the monster again, no file explosion. No file. Let's go back into sword mode. And let's uh, let's charge up our... Uh, yeah. Go back into sword mode. We'll uh, explore, explore axe mode a little bit later. But for now, I need to. I want to cover all of sword mode. I was just uh, telling you what files are being used for, and that is mostly for active. Now, I've shown you a lot of the basics, um, basic attacks in sword mode. However, there are other moves in sword mode that let you chain attacks together, which makes this uh, weapon very fluent and um, what? modular. I would say it's modular. As in, you can chain basically any move into any other move. Uh, not exactly, but that is the idea. So, you know, let's just uh, just stand over here. Okay, so let's see what should I cover next. Um, okay, I think this would be a good idea. So after you do any attack, actually, no, no, no. Here, here. Um, you know how I was saying earlier that you know how I was saying earlier that if you are running around, right? So if you if you don't run around and you press X, you just uncheat. But if you run around and press X, right, you go into forward slash one, right? And forward slash, first of all, it's a gap closer. It's basically weak slash, but it's a gap closer, which makes it very very useful for getting into a monster when you are 
you know, you're like away from the monster and you need to get that gap pose so you can start dealing damage, this would be the way. Now, you don't want to be sheathing the weapon every time you want to use this move, right? Because if you do, well, then you're sheathing the weapon and Charge Blade has one of the longest sheath times in the game. Only next to like Heavy Bowgun. Right? Like this is too long. This takes way too long to just do one force. So you can actually do forward slash from uh, a drawn position. So when you're drawn, you can still do the forward slash. How you do that is you actually hit X and A at the same time. And this does forward slash. This is extremely useful. I This is one of those moves I will use like all the time. This is always a move I will use when I'm in sword mode and I'm engaging a monster, I will do this. Because this gets you in position to do your charging combo. Now, charging combo uh, includes this. It's, it's mostly that. It's mostly charge double slash. Now, if you look at what I'm about to do, um, this is, I'll, I'll show you an example of, uh, I'll show you an example of like a, a combo start, but without the chaining, because this is like, this just shows you what you should be doing when you go in. Uh, and then I'll show you a move I'll show you some ways later in which you can start chaining it so it, you can do it essentially infinitely. So from this position, say you're just, you know, you're, you're watching the monster, right? It leaves an opening. You go in, forward slash, so X and A, then you charge, and then you double slash, right? You can't do much after that. Um, there are a few follow-up options to uh, that double slash though. So number one, which is the one I use less often. Actually, no, you know what? Uh, number one, the one I use, yeah, the one I use less often, but is still valid. <laughs> this is still valid, is you would go um, forward, you do forward slash, hold on one sec. You do forward slash, charge slash, and then you hit, okay, wait, what the fuck? Hold on, one second. My files made you bounce. So you do forward slash, right? Charge. And then you would hit X. Now X does actually, uh, if you hit X after double slash, it actually does the, uh, the last hit in the X X the uh, X spam combo. So if you notice the X spam combo, right, that last hit is the same one you do if you charge the double slash. So the great thing about that is that the uh, the last hit in that charge double, uh, the last hit in the uh, X combo is actually pretty good. Like. That's the only, that's the only good hit in that move. So it's like an actually decent attack. Like if you look at the damage wise, okay, hundred from the uh, thing, and then you do like sixty, right? Right. So it, it's actually decent damage. It's also decent charge. That last hit in the combo also gives an okay amount of charge. Uh, I just want to touch on this because we're at this point. If you notice, my uh, files are now glowing red, and they're actually filled in completely as red and also my sword's glowing hot um if i try to hit the monster right now i bounce that's because my sword has been overcharged this is something that you will run into uh if you're new to the weapon pretty easily because you'll be hitting the monster in sword mode and if you're not charging your uh files essentially if you're not doing um yeah if you're not charging your files then you will bounce because your sword has been overcharged. So any attack you do, yeah, you'll start bouncing and then you'll be very frustrated. Don't do this. Uh, you try not to end up overcharging your files. Once you hit red on your files, uh, you want to store them. It's a fast animation. There's not much commitment. Uh, you want to store them because otherwise you literally can't use your sword anymore. That's that. That's Because that, that's the thing that a lot of people run into, myself included when I started out, is that I'd be like, Going in with the charge blade, right? I'd be in sword, sword and shield mode. I would go into the monster, you know, charge a bunch, right? Charge a bunch. Okay, I'm in yellow now, you know, charge a bunch. I'm in red now, right? Overcharge. I'm in overcharged red now. And then I just can't do anything anymore. So always remember to store your files once they hit red. Okay. Okay. Okay, so the last move is. No. Oh. Okay, there's two more moves uh, that I. There's two more like uh, sword moves that, uh, at least off the top of my head, that I can remember. One of them, it, this one lets this this one lets you do the infinite uh, charge combo. So after you do any attack, 
You can hit X and A. So X and A is normally is advanced slash, right? Or forward slash. If you actually uh, use X and A after any attack, so even weak slash, you can do weak slash, current stroke, right? Any, any single attack, if you do X and A again, it does shield bash or shield thrust, I guess it's called. Now shield thrust is an extremely useful move. Not because it does any not good, not because it does like good damage or anything, but because it's a fast transitionary move. You can use it after every single move, meaning you can do it after uh, any combo in. So you know how we had that problem earlier where uh, we did like an advancing slash, right? And we did a charge slash, and we went to a spinning slash, but now we're stuck, right? We can hop out, but like that's not an infinite combo. That's a combo, right? So what you can do is actually, this is uh, a very, very easy combo and it's actually uh, very important. This is actually a very easy combo and it's an important combo that I always use. And it's actually very simple. You just charge double slash, shield bash, charge double slash, shield bash, charge double slash, shield bash. And you essentially just do this until your files are charged. So. Okay, I go up to the monster, right? I have, um, I don't have empty files, but I do have white files. So, charge double slash. Shield bash. Shield bash. Right? Very quick red files. So generally, a uh, good combo for charging files when you have an opening is uh, advancing slash, charge double slash, shield bash, charge double slash and that gives you all your files immediately that's right there that's a that's a full file charge now sometimes you won't have the uh, option to do that entire combo all in one go because maybe the monster is attacking you or something uh but generally that's what you're aiming for this is the combo you're aiming for this is the one you want to remember and it's relatively simple too it's essentially x and a right but it forward slash right it's x and a forward slash right a x and a again Hey, and that's it. If you miss some of the charge slash, uh, you can literally just... If you miss some of the charge uh, slashes, say you don't get like a full file charge, you can literally just do it again. You can do it again. You can do it again. You can just do it again. You can literally do this forever. Like literally, you can do this forever until either your sword overcharges, which, you know, at that point you should have uh, charged your files. Or uh, if you... Um, you know, lose somehow lose all your sharpness and go to like red, in which case you'll never you'll, you'll keep bouncing. Yeah. You sharpen. So that's the combo you're looking for. Generally, uh yeah. Now, uh let's see. The last move in sword mode that I want to cover is called I think it's called sliding slash. It's called fade slash. I don't know why. I actually don't know why it's called Fade Slash, but this is the Fade Slash. So, essentially Fade Slash is after any move, kind of like kind of like how after any move you can Shield Bash, right? With X and A. After any move, you can just press A uh, and then hold a direction. So, you have to hold the direction first or else you just end up uh, doing Charge Slash, right? So, you hit any, any uh, move and then after any move, you hold a direction, press A, as you can see there. Right. You do a Fade Slash. A fate slash can go in all four cardinal directions that your character is facing. You can go forward, you can go backward, you can go sideways, and you go other sideways. Or you can go other sideways. This is an extremely good move uh, because this is essentially your repositioning tool outside of uh, the dodge. Now, you can also do it after, it doesn't even have to be an attack, you can literally do it after a uh, dodge. So you just create extra distance. So after you dodge, right, you either dodge again, right, or you could use no stamina. Or, or you can no use no stamina, right? You face slash. Now this is a good repositioning tool. It's not a very good defensive tool though, uh, because there's no iframes on it. Right? There's no iframes on it, so it's uh, not the greatest defensive tool in the world. But... It does have a guard point. Now, you may be asking, what is a guard point? Nah, uh, so guard points are a thing. I don't know if they're, I can't remember if they're exclusive to Charge Blade, but uh, essentially, 
what guard points are is in summary they are animations part of animations of certain attacks that cause uh you to block so certain attacks will uh put the shield in front of you so generally how you know something is a guard point is if the shield ends up in front of you during the attack so one one the guard point uh it's actually really easy to see is the last hit of the x combo so remember spinning slash so spinning slash actually puts the shield in front of you if you look at the front of the front Shields in front of you. That will actually block an attack. Other moves that uh, have guard points. Every single fade slash. See, every single fade slash has it. Fade slash. Fade slash. And fade. And, uh, and fade. Yep. Every single one of the fade slashes have a guard point. Does your SNS have a guard point? I see. Okay. The guard points are extremely useful because you'd be wondering, okay, why don't you just guard? Well, the biggest thing uh, is that guard points actually have more defense or more blocking value than... Actually, I'm not sure if this is true. And so it's true in world, but I'm going to assume it's still the same. Uh, guard points have more blocking value than just guarding. So uh, let me see if I can demonstrate. Oh, wait, I just realized. Let me see if I can demonstrate. Attack. Big Tom. So guard points have more uh, blocking value than just you know. Is this falling? Okay. The guard points have more blocking value than actually just guarding. So if you just guard, say, okay, I'm just gonna guard here, right? Let's see how far back I get now. Okay, I got knocked back pretty far, right? I couldn't do anything there. I was uh, spamming my buttons. So I'm spamming buttons. Nothing. There, right? See how see how far I went back there? Now, if I actually guard point, uh, supposedly I should get knocked back less. Uh, I don't think I got. Did I get knocked back less? <laughs> I don't actually know if I got knocked back less. I think I did. That's the idea, though, is that guard points knock you back less. Uh, I don't think it's actually knocking me back less. I think it's just too strong. Okay, but th that's the idea, is that uh, they have more block value than just a normal guard, generally. That's the uh, generic idea, but the stomp might just be too uh, chunky for that. Number two is that... Number two, which is also a very big reason, you cannot guard during an attack until the animation's over. So if you, like, say you're doing charge double slash, look how slow that guard is. You are open for the entirety of that attack until that guard comes up. So you, I'm holding down the button, by the way. So I'm doing charge double slash and I'm guarding. It's very slow, right? Look how slow that is. It is also good for offensive guard. Uh, however, you could just, you know, guard like that. But yes, uh, guard points generally trigger offensive guard because of how they uh, how they work. Whoops, press the wrong button. Let me make this thing stop stomp. Okay, uh, have I covered everything here? Uh, I think so. Let's move on to Axe Mode. Okay, here we are. We're in Axe Mode. So, as I said earlier, Axe Mode, you end up being slower. Uh, and then you start carrying around this giant axe. Now, in Axe Mode, you have quite a few offensive options and very few defensive options. At least, you know, without using wire buttons, which we'll cover later. But, for now, we will just cover all the basic. So, in Axe Mode, what can you do? So, in axe mode, if you press X, rising slash. Okay. Right? If you press X again after rising slash, you get overhead slash. If you hit the if you keep spamming it, you get a com you get a infinite combo. You can head off to class now, have fun. Okay, see ya. So this is your basic, you know, up and down kind of attack. Uh this is actually ends up decently useful. Uh, with a specific switch skill, but generally, you're not using this. In, in a very general sense, you're probably not going to be using this very often. You you will be using the rising slash, but you will not be using the uh, the, the whole fact that you can do it now. So not too interesting, right? Uh, 
Now, if we go to the eight combo, now eight combo is actually a three part combo. So eight combo is one element discharge one, element discharge two, which is two swings, and then amp element discharge. Now, if you noticed, uh, element discharge one hit once, had one file explosion, element discharge two had twice, is two file explosions. Element Discharge 3 had one hit, but then it exploded for three files. So, and the great thing about this, as you've noticed, I only consumes three files. So every single one of those moves only used one file. So essentially, the farther into that combo you get, the more file value you get for using a file. Like, so generally, uh, it's a bad idea. This is this is very situational, by the way. Like this, uh, this ends up being useful later on. But this move is generally not what you're looking for. You're not, you don't want to be using uh, Element Discharge 1 just because it's so little value uh, for, your, um, for your files. Because one file for one file explosion is not very good. Right? Oh, you can also, every time you charge, you can uh, change into that. That's not very useful in this version of the game, but you know, you can do that. Uh, let me switch back. So, if you don't want to use. Uh, so if I'm telling you don't use amp, um, uh, sorry if I'm telling you not to use element discharge one, then what are you supposed to do? You can't access the uh, combo without using amp, uh, element discharge one, right? That's where you would be wrong. In which because you can actually access the rest of the combo uh, from rising slash. So if I use rising slash, right? Let's say I use rising slash and then I hit A. So I use X and then I A. I actually go into the second hit. Of uh, element discharge two, which is extremely useful because it means you skip using that single file that does very little damage. Right, so you change, you change. First of all, you change this move. So you change this move, which does very little damage and also has only one file explosion. And you change it to this move, which is barely slower. Right, and you get straight into that. You save more files. You do more damage. It's just better. It's essentially better. Let me try to the files again. Okay. See? Not too difficult, right? Uh, let's go back here. Okay. Now, let's see. Uh, okay. Let's talk about. Let's talk a little bit more about that last hit in the A combo. So. As I was saying, you don't really want to be using element. Uh, sorry, you don't want to be using element discharge one. That's uh, often. So, when you're doing the combo, you want rallying slash, right? Element discharge two, and then this is the uh, strongest hit technically in this mode. I I'll show you that there are stronger hits later. But you do rising slash, you hit A, hit A one more time, you go into the last hit. This is amp element discharge. Amp element discharge does a shit ton of damage. Uh, and if you notice, the training dummy actually got stunned. That's because we are using impact files. Now, uh, just to show you what I mean by that, what like what are impact files? Uh, where are they? Okay. So if you see, oh wait, you can't see. <laughs> Hold on, let me move myself. Uh, where am I? Move myself from YouTube Studio. Unlock myself. Move myself over to the side a bit. Okay. So if you look over here, where my eyes are pointing, or at least trying to point, uh, there is a file type. Now, um, this is on my weapon, by the way. So this is uh, my weapon screen. So a file type, it says impact file. Impact file is essentially, uh, uh, how would I explain it? It's kind of like how gun lance shells are like true damage. Impact files are true damage. They don't crit. Um, they do not get... Yeah, they don't get crit. They also don't get negative crit. Um, they don't care what part of the body they hit. They always do the same amount of damage. So these are impact files. Uh, impact files can cr impact files are able to stun monsters, just like a hammer or a uh, like a blunt weapon is able to, which makes these extremely useful. Uh, and also makes them universal because since they are true damage, they don't lose or gain any damage from uh, fighting different types of monsters. However, that also means they don't you know they don't gain any more damage from being of an element, which is the other option, uh, as um, the other option is element files, in which case instead of doing uh, 
the stun and true damage, you instead do element damage on your spells, which is better in some situations, uh, worse in others. So generally, if you're starting off as Charge Blade, you probably want to be going for the impacts anyways, because impacts are just more universal. They are uh, generally also not that much worse than an element file versus a compatible monster. And they also have the utility of being able to stun, which is extremely useful and something you should like to do. Okay. Now, is this all there is to the charge blade? There is not, because there is actually another step. Several steps, actually. So this is called the charge blade, right? Not the charge files, right? Uh, and actually, charge blade doesn't even make any sense either, because this is more of a charge shield weapon. So... If you notice beside my files, there are actually two icons. There is a sword and there is a shield. Now, these two are actually relatively important. They're, they're very important. I've been showing you, uh, I've, I've been showing you using the weapon without having these two items charged. They should be charged. These are uh, things that should be essentially 24 seven charged whenever you're fighting because here, I'll just show you. Um, let me just charge my files up quick so I can actually do something. Alright, so we charge our files, right? So we have our files. Now, how do we charge the shield? Let's go with shield first, since it's the more important one. How do we charge the shield? Um, so, essentially, how you charge the shield is you have to go into some. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I forgot. <laughs> more stuff. Sorry. Uh, you essentially have to go into uh, Amped Element Discharge 3. And then you cancel it by guarding. Now, that seems very inconvenient, right? You're like, oh, Amped Element Discharge 3. Well, you would have to go through your entire combo for it. Also, by the way, uh, if you're moving and you press X, I forgot to mention this, you do a dash slam. This is also very useful. This is essentially the same thing as uh, Advancing Slash in Sword It does a lot of damage and has high reach. It's essentially Rising Slash, but overhead. It, 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 it fills in the same role. Uh, so... If you're wondering what this is, this is the same role, but movement, and this is actually really useful too. I kind of forgot about it. Anyways, so what is not very useful? Uh, I, I can tell you, I can tell you, this is not very useful. <laughs> Anyways, so you'd be thinking it's inconvenient, right? So if I have to go through the entire combo, go to here, and then cancel it with my guard button, right? I don't know why that said A, because that was not A, that was ZR. I hit ZR after that charge my shield and that seems extremely inconvenient well here's the kicker you can actually hold on you can actually uh access um your amped element discharge three if you're sitting in axe mode right from a standstill if you hit x and a you go straight into uh amped element discharge three now because my shield was charged i've got a few different moves now uh which is why that move is different but it would be the same so if i, if I were to show you like this. I go to here. It's the same move. It's not a different move. Wait. So this that move changed because my uh, sword is charged. Or sorry, my shield is charged. Now, what does shield charging do? Well, a few things. You get access to a few new moves, which I will talk about. Uh, and then also, your guard is stronger now. So actually, I need to test this. So if my guard should be stronger now by about like two ish levels. See? There we go. I don't get knocked back this far anymore. So when I guard point on this, look, I don't get knocked back this far. So charging the shield gives it more shield power. You know? Uh, who would have guessed? Now your shield eventually runs out of charge. If I remember correctly, it's uh, 30 seconds per file. Uh, so right now it's flashing. Flat. Whenever it flashes, it means it's under 30 seconds. Um... You can get a max duration of 30 seconds times the number of your files. So because normally at default you'll have uh, five files like I do right now, but you can add another file, in which case it will increase the duration. But oh, oh, and also I just uh, I just did the combo, which I uh, haven't talked about yet. So if you actually go, oh sorry, okay, so um, you can actually enter uh amped element discharge three even from your short uh, even from your sword and shield you don't have to be in axe mode to do it while it is easier in axe mode to do it like while it is very much easier to do it in axe mode like look at this it's one button right you go into that 
it is uh, much, much more convenient if, you can, if you're able to do it from sword mode, in which case you can. Uh, how to do it in sword mode is, remember shield bash? So shield bash is essentially the move you can do X and A after any attack, right? So X and A, you know, from any attack, you know, X and A. If you actually hit X and A again after the shield bash, you get this move. It's, it's Amped Element Discharge 3. This is step 3. So after Shield Bash, which is why this is such a useful move, you get that move. So you can skip straight from Sword Mode, which is your defensive, very nimble, and you can just straight up enter the strongest move in your arsenal straight from there. Like, that's, uh, yeah, that's kind of insane. Also, by the way, because my shield is charged, Shield Bash uh, has a uh, foul damage. So if I actually go up to the monster and I have... Shield bash I got pile damage. Just wanted to put that out there. Which is why it uh, does this weird lightning shock effect. Yeah, that's a uh, pile. Uh, let's see. Okay, now that we talked about charging our shield, we also have our sword to charge. Now, the sword charging uh, is done from charging your files so if you enter the charge files animation i don't have any files at the moment but it does it works both ways so charge your files and then you hold x until that flash now if you hold x too long so if you, if you don't hold x long enough you just do a return if you hold x too long i think you also do a return shot? yes so this is another one of those you gotta time it thing this is pretty generous timing right Hi, King Cosma. I'm just doing some uh, very scuffed um, crash course stuff. So if you uh, you have to release it at the right time, which is, is a pretty big window, it's essentially whenever that sword goes into the shield and you hear it pop. And you let go. And you go into this uh, element discharge slash. All right, and it's element slash. What this does is now my sword is now charged. If you notice, my sword is now pulsing with lightning. Now what changes is my sword. Now that's file damage. Uh, number two, my sword now has Mind's Eye. Now, if you don't know what Mind's Eye is, uh, well, essentially, monsters, some parts of the monster will bounce. Nah, I kind of wish my sword wasn't charged so I could show you. But some parts of the monster will make you bounce. Uh, other times, it's literally just your sharpness. If your sharpness is too bad, then you will bounce as well. Now, if your sword is charged, it gets Mind's Eye innately without you having to skill. So I can literally attack this, attack this monster, and it's totally. Right? I can see I can attack the monster and it's totally fine. It's totally fine. Even if I enter, even if I enter uh, overcharge state, it would be fine. <laughs> charge blade I tried using it might go back to it, but when I used it for the first time, it was like rocket science. I am actually teaching it right now. Uh, I might, like, once I'm done, might go back and literally just do it again. Because uh, I don't actually feel like playing today. I just kind of feel like messing around. Anyways, uh, so that's charging the sword. Now, an important thing to note about charging the sword is you can't actually. I think this is still true. You can't charge a sword until you charge a shield. It, there's a certain order to it, and it's um, it's the order on the top of the screen, essentially right to left. So you can't charge a sh uh, shield until you charge your files. Uh, you can't charge a sword until you charge a shield. Let me actually do this. Uh... Yes, you can still do the slash, but your shield is not. Uh, since your shield is not charged, your sword is not charged. <laughs> your friend was laughing at you while your brain was exploding. Hey, it's time for your brain to not explode. We're talking about Charge Blade, and we're learning it together here. Well, I already learned it, but you guys are learning it. I'm a horrible teacher, by the way. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh, am I back? Well, cool, nice. Okay. Uh, I don't even remember where I left off. Uh, we did recently learn bow and sword and shield. I like uh, sword and shield. Uh, I am not a particular fan of bow because it's it feels weird to be like a shotgun. It's also a bow. I, I do I do say it does a lot of damage. Though. Right. So uh, I don't know if you caught this, guys. Uh, but okay. So the order is charge your files. Right. So this is your basic gameplay plan. Charge your files. Right. Once you charge your files, you charge your shield. Okay. Once you 
to charge your shield it is an option whether to charge your um sword or not because uh honestly i don't charge my sword ever like this this is not something i usually do unless the enemy unless the enemy is like specifically hard like i i can't like i can't say it's like a patronodon and for some reason i'm hitting its back which it really shouldn't be but yeah, unless the enemy is hard i never really charge the sword it's not a priority um however you can do you the, the reason i don't do it is just because it's such a long animation commitment to do like what is essentially just like something i'm not going to use because i once you go and you charge this and you charge again right once you go and charge again you're most likely going to be uh spending files to use axe mode now uh let's see okay i think i can um okay i'll show you now so yeah, long animations lead to a lot of punishment. So it's not a move I typically use. However, it is an option uh, on monsters that are too hard to hit, which is not a lot. Uh, and generally, even 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 with monsters that are hard to hit, you don't still use this because what happens in Axe Mode is that Axe Mode has a Mind's Eye by itself. So if I say, oh, oh, it's a Chana, see? Um, my X attacks don't have Mind's Eye, okay? So so any, like all these X attacks, uh, I lied, they have, <laughs> I lied, they have Mind's Eye. I lied, they have they do have mind's eye. Okay, never mind. I could have sworn this didn't have mind's eye. Oh, I think it's just because I have white sharpness. Hold on. One sec, let me burn my sharpness. Right, I'm also gonna I think this burns sharpness faster. There we go. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's just because I have white sharpness, but yeah, okay. If you notice, bonk the monster in the back. Right? Uh, with my X attack, it, it bounces. This doesn't have mind's eye. You know what does have mind's eye, though? A attacks. All, all attacks that use files have mind's eye. Okay, you know, unless you're, uh, unless you're... Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Let me charge my shield again. Okay. Now, really? Okay, so now, without any switch skills, so if you're using the basic switch skills, which I'll talk about in a sec, uh, this is going to be your, um, this is going to be your, like, um, what's it called? Your, your gameplay loop. So you're going to be charging your files, right? So you charge your files, put the files into your shield, so, you know, you put them in the shield, uh, you, you charge your files again, get to this point where you have a charged shield and you have files, and then you're going to essentially be fishing for what is called the ultra amped element discharge. Now, this is what changes when you charge your shield and you use element discharge three. So generally, element discharge three, which I can actually show you. Uh, so it looks like this. Right? Element discharge three looks like that. It's the attack that uh, makes three files pop where you hit. Right? Knocks out the monster, that kind of deal. Uh, if your shield is charged, however. Which, this might sound contradictory right now because I literally just used it while my shield is charged, but I'll explain why how I did that. Uh, but if your shield is charged, however, and you actually use this move, it turns into Amps, or well, Ultra Element Discharge, which is a bigger attack. This is a stronger attack by, like, far. This is for damage. So, uh, Ultra Amped Element Discharge spends every single one of your files uh, to use a super strong attack which will slam for a lot of physical damage, then every single file that you have explodes behind the monster where you hit uh, for X amount of damage. And because this, this is an impact, this, because this is an impact file charge blade, right? Uh, which I recommend you would be starting with because it, honestly, I use it like exclusively as well. Um, this will also knock up the monster. But those explosions back there, those will knock up the monster. Now, it's not as consistent as a uh, uh, element discharge. So, amped element discharge. Uh, this is this is a bit more consistent for knockouts. Well, if I can hit it, but that's more consistent for knockouts because it is uh, all the files in one place. This is more of a files in a line. Um, however, it, it you do have the option of being able to like knock out the monster when you're like on the opposite side of him. So, if his head was like lower, right? You're doing this. You can hit the monster, shit ton of physical damage, and then the file explosions will literally go out the other end of him. That is your damage move. That is what you're fishing for. When you're playing classic charge blade, which is what you start off with, 
That is the combo sequence you're going for. You're charging your files, put the files into your shield, charge up your shield, charge your files again, you use those files, you charge them the second time, you fish for uh, the amp element discharge, or the ultra element discharge, I mean. And you rinse, rinse, repeat. So then you, once it's done, you have no files anymore, right? You go back to charging your files, right? And then you, uh, the ultra element discharge. It's actually relatively simple if you think about it. Uh, it's just charge, store, charge. Use the charge on the second one to uh, use your biggest move. That is essentially what you're going to be doing if you have your default switch skills. Okay, now now since I'm talking about switch skills, it's, I guess it's time to uh, talk about your default switch skills. Okay, so here we go. So if you hit the L, which it doesn't look like it's I'm doing anything right now, but right now I'm holding down ZL. This is your wire bug button, right? So if you play Monster Hunter Rise, you know ZL is your uh, wire bug button. So this essentially uh, lets you use your wire bug. If you have your weapon unequipped, it opens up like this little pointer. So also your wire bug, right? Uh, but there are two wire bug moves that you can change out uh, in the uh, chart. Wait, no. No, there's two wire bug moves. You can't change both out. You can only change one out. So the first one is you hit ZL, right? You hold down ZL and you hit X. What it does is that puts you in Morphing Advance. Now this is actually a very useful skill. Um, the Morphing Advance, you know, I, you noticed I was in Sword Mode and I hit Morphing Advance and I end up in Axe Mode, right? So that's one thing. It lets you morph into Axe Mode. That's number one. Uh, if you're in Axe Mode already, it keeps you in Axe Mode. So you will always end up in Axe Mode whenever you leave, leave this attack. Uh, if you... Hit ZR uh, after this move, it puts you into uh, spinning slash, which puts you back into sword mode pretty quickly. So if you if you notice the monster is like going to attack you after you've done this, you can do this, and this has a guard point at the end, which means you'll be guarding. So it's like extra. This is extra defense. Like you don't have to care about uh, if the monster is like coming to attack you. There's no other way to get out of this. You literally just you literally just guard point. You you hit ZR, you guard. And it gives you a guard point, and you will block that attack. So not only is this safe and mobile, sorry, not only is this mobile, uh, and even though you, it looks like it puts you in a very vulnerable state, it really doesn't because uh, after you do it, you can put yourself in like the fastest guard point you've ever seen in your life. Like, that just goes. If if something bad really happens, like, and you react fast enough, you can do that. You can uh, block it without getting hurt. So it's a very safe move, and it also. Only uses one wire bug, and it's also a fast charge. So it's, it's a, it is a very, very useful move. Since Charge Blade is actually one of the least mobile uh, weapons, uh, it may look kind of mobile here, right? But when you're really when you're fighting a monster, right? Generally, a sword mode, you're probably gonna be like sitting in one place. Bait slash is, is there, but it's a bit slow, right? So it's kind of like, ironically, Charge Blade, which looks like a more mobile weapon, is actually not that mobile. So this adds a lot of. Uh, that's a lot of uh bonus to it. Now my second switch skill, which is the de uh, the second default switch skill, which this is the one you can change out, but this is called counter performance. Now counter performance. Now if you're looking at that and you're like, hey, uh, that didn't do much. Uh, what it does is that it's a guard. Because if you notice, you know, my shield goes out. Now let me just quickly turn the monster on. Dummy on. Ah, okay. Let me track my shield, by the way. This doesn't change the move at all, uh, but, yeah. Alright, so... This move is kind of broken. This is the... I would say that this is probably the best uh, guarding switch skill in the game. So, counter be performance, if you notice. So, whenever I do this, right, I just kind of sit there for a while. My shield out in front. All of that is a guard. So if you get hit during that, you will guard. And it's extremely strong too. Like you can basically not get hit out of that. That was kind of hard to see because I did it so uh, last minute, but. Right, see, it's a guard. Even if I do it like super early. Right, even if I do it super early, it's a guard. Even if I do it super last minute, it's a guard. Oh, <laughs> I got hit by that. Don't worry about it. I didn't even hit the button. Even if you do a super last minute, it's a guard. 
It's also, I don't think it eats sharpness. If it does, it eats like super little. Um, and if you are observant right now, you'll notice that I suddenly have file charge. That is because counter performance charges all your files. And this is one of the biggest reasons why this is so broken. Because generally when you're fighting a monster, right? And you want to charge your files. Generally when you're fighting a monster, you want to charge your files. You gotta get advancing slash, right? You gotta, you gotta charge your thing, right? You go to shield bash, you gotta charge your thing, right? Go back, escape, charge your files. That took a while. That this that like that takes a while, right? But after peak performance says no you, uh, and lets you charge your files basically instantly. Like not not even basically instantly, it's quite literally instantly. Like look at that. It's it's all your files, one go, just from blocking one attack. This is an extremely strong move. And I would recommend taking this like 90% of the time. Uh if you're new to the weapon. The other switch skill is is good, yes, but this is just like broken good. It's it's a lot of utility that you'd be missing if you switch this out. So. Now we covered those two moves. Actually, no. Uh there's actually a few um Oh I, I kinda did a big stupid, but uh forgot to talk about follow-ups. So let me uh quickly we could be charging my weapons again. This is a bit annoying. You know, it's charged blade. It's taking so long. All my charge is running out. Okay. So I'm gonna go back and uh, talk about some uses for these uh, switch skills now. Now that I've covered what they are. So, more advanced, right? So I already told you that you can Z hit ZR and you'll go back into sword mode. You also have a guard point, so you're basically safe throughout that entire thing. Uh, what I didn't tell you is that there are some other follow-up moves that aren't just that. You can 360 Ultra Element Discharge. You can 360. I repeat, you can 360 Ultra Element Discharge. So if you're going like from monster, right? And you you just dodge, right? And you, you're looking the wrong way. You can 360 this. This goes in 360 degrees. As long as you're pointing in the right direction and you just do the attack, you hit X and A, you can 360 that. Uh, there's other, also other options, uh, which are also pretty good. So you can also hit um, X, which also does spinning slash. Uh, X and ZR do the same thing, by the way. Um, so just a spinning slash, right? Uh, this also does spinning slash. It's, it's the same thing. It's the same button. Uh, the other last option you can do is a? So A does uh, straight into element discharge 2. So this doesn't look very useful right now because generally I, I did say that you're generally going to be fishing for amp element discharge. However, right, so you're going to be fishing for like amp element discharge whenever you're um, doing things. But this actually becomes pretty useful, uh, the double spin uh, element discharge 2 when you equip a different switch skill. Okay, uh, follow ups to the. I'm pretty sure. Hold on one second. Where's my? I should just keep this thing on. Okay. Follow-ups to counter peak performance. They're basically the same. Uh, if you're in counter peak performance, there are a few uh, follow-ups. Biggest one. Ultra element discharge. You can only do this uh, in like a 40 degree cone, but oh, but you can only do this in like a 40 degree cone, but uh. You can't do a 360 like the other one, right? Uh, the max I can pull this is uh, that way. Yeah, I can't pull it any farther. So this is more like your basic kind of like guard into a ultra element discharge, but this is an option. So this is an option, right? Uh, or you can charge a shield by doing the exact same thing. Right? Or you can X, in which case it will instantly uh, do this move. So generally you have to charge your shield. Or sorry, if you want to charge your sword, you got to do that, right? You got to hold it. Uh, if you do it from counter peak performance, it actually uh, does it instantly, which is also extremely useful. This is the, I would say this is like the only way uh, I would ever actually charge my sword because uh, the other ways of doing it are just too slow. Even then, there's better options when you're doing this, so don't rely on that to be the case. Uh, I don't think A does anything, but I could be wrong. Let me just check. It is an axe smash. Uh, generally, you're not going to want to do that either. 
There's no reason you want to hit A when you're doing that because uh, no, there's no follow-up for that. Put yourself in a defense-less uh, position and then you're also... Uh, because you generally would be staying in sword and shield mode until you have that open. Okay. Now let's start covering some... Uh, hold on. Let's just turn off the stomp. Okay, now we're going to start ch uh, checking out some switch skills now that we've covered uh, the basic or the uh, kit for the uh, non-switch skill, uh, the default switch skill. Uh, so, number one, actually, I should probably start from the bottom. Mm, and yeah, I'll start from the bottom considering this is a very big uh, style change. Okay, Axe Hopper. So Axe Hopper, uh, over here, this replaces kind of performance. So you lose your guard point. Sorry, no, you lose your uh, power guard that charges your files, which is a pretty big bummer. However, you get Axe Hopper. Now, Axe Hopper is actually really good too. Uh, it just gets overshadowed. It does. It's. It does get overshadowed by uh, by counter performance, just because counter performance is such a really strong, safe utility school skill. So what Axe Hopper does is. Uh, if you hit, you know, ZL, you hit A. Right. This would normally be counter peak performance, but instead you get Axe Hopper. Now, that doesn't look too impressive, right? Like, I did, I did 179 damage. That's pretty nice. There are follow-ups to this. This is essentially Morphic Advanced, but in the air. And it's powered up. So, a lot of the moves that you could have done with Morphic Advanced, like, uh, like 360ing an Amp Element Destroyed, you can also do with Axe Hopper. So, if I just show you here... Wrong button. Sorry. Also, I gotta charge my shield, but give me one second. Give me one second. Don't worry about this. So, if you want to charge your shield, sorry, not charge. <laughs> so, uh, there's some follow ups to Axe Hopper. The main one, which is the one you're probably gonna be looking for, is Ultra Element Discharge out of uh, Axe Hopper. Now, generally, just the same as the rest of the ways that you usually access it, you just hit X and A whenever you go into the air. Uh, so, show you here. Just hit the wrong button again. Drop me. You use Axe Hopper. Right. Then, when you're in the air, hit X and A. You get Amp Element Discharge in the air. <laughs> Will there be a test on this? I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. Now, if you notice, look at the damage number on that. Look at my previous combo. Do you see something strange about why it is absurdly high at the moment? Uh, Axe Hopper's Amped Element Discharge is actually like three times as strong as a uh, normal Element Discharge. So, okay, here, let me show you. Here's a comparison. Here's Normal Element Discharge, or Ultra Element Discharge, right? Right. Right. 647, right? It was like 200 on the first hit-ish, right? 300-ish. Uh, I, technically, I missed one attack. That was like a small attack, so I'll show you with that as well. Let me see. But you Hold on, right so it was like it was like 300 ish on the initial hit then the files exploded and it did like about like 600 ish damage right look at the initial hit on axe hopper's uh element discharge i want to miss the uh initial axe hopper by the way so, so i can show you the damage from the discharge alone so i think it was right. I missed the... Uh, sorry, wait, hold on. That was a bad comparison. I didn't even hit the same body part. <laughs> hold on, that was a bad comparison. I didn't even hit the same body part. <laughs> wait, so... Fucking... Can I just be... Oh, um, okay, here we go. Six hundred seventy. 670. That was the one hit. So, Axe Hopper... It... Axe Hopper is extremely good burst damage. This is more than Great Sword. This is quite literally more than Great Sword. The, the hit itself is like a Great Sword hit. And then, just because of the fact that this Charge Blade whole deal is that it also does damage to the Spirit effect of the hit, you do so much damage with Axe Hopper. Hold on. Charging shield. Don't worry about it. Like, that's extremely a high amount of damage. 
which makes it sad that it's unfortunately in com competition right like look at that damage uh, it, it, this is in competition with um with the other switch skill which was um uh what was it <laughs> this is in competition with the other switch skill right so it makes it a bit worse just because counter performance is extremely good as utility however you you choose what you want to play they're both viable this is um this is like axe hopper is definitely viable just like look at the damage it did like it is 100 percent a viable thing like, look at that yeah see uh even if i didn't hit the head i hit the body that was 366 so uh it's still more damage by like quite a wide margin right uh but it, it does like axe hopper does let you hit heads which you normally wouldn't be able to with uh ultra element discharge on the ground so that is uh axe hopper so axe hopper essentially it gives you more access to the monster whenever you're doing element discharge it's a bit slow unfortunately but it does make up for the fact that it does like a crap ton of damage um also you can 360 it so i can uh oh. where am i hi trubisky I'm, uh, I'm in the uh, training range right now. I'm trying to take some charge blade. So uh, it also makes up for the fact that it's a bit slow in that it can 360. So if the monster is a bit slow, which is actually a pretty decent uh, option, so you would use this when the monster is slow generally, or if it's in the air, um, is that you can 360 this. So this helps with the whole it's a bit slow thing. So I can fire backwards, I can fire it sideways. How do you get in there? I'm new to this game. Oh, uh, so easy way. Hit your options, right? Uh, or your not your options, your menu. Move around the village, and it is a training area. Uh, if you want to know how from the village, I can show you later. But essentially, um, to like the to the right of uh, in the entirety of town. Is it the right of the entirety of town? I actually don't remember. Um, actually, this is <laughs> this is the only way I know how to get in here. I don't actually know what the other way to get in here is, so... Uh, I think it's actually just the entrance. No, it's not. Wait, I don't remember. Uh, what was it? I'll figure it out later, but I actually don't remember either. Okay, so that was Axe Hopper. Axe Hopper, it's viable. Uh, unfortunately, patch performance, generally, I would say is better, unless... You know, there are situations you'd use both. This is more universally one. This is the more situational one. They're both extremely strong. But I would stick with this. I usually stick with this. Uh, my recommendation is to stick with this because it's easier to use. It is uh, more convenient for you. And it combos a bit better with the other skills. But Axe Hopper is extremely strong if you can do it. Okay, next one. Morph Slash. You're going to counter Morph Slash. Uh, this is a situational thing that is really based on practice. Because neither of these is actually better than the other. So, if you don't know what Morph Slash is, Morph Slash is this. Okay. You hit ZR, you hit X. Right? Then in Axe Mode, you hit ZR. Right? This is this. It's just, it's just this. So, it's changing from Axe to Sword Mode. Right? That is Morph Slash. So, it changes Morph Slash into Counter Morph Slash. Now, Counter Morph Slash is very similar. There is barely much change to this. However, I will tell you what the change is. Number one, it's slower. So because it's slower, if you notice, very much slower. Slower. This is slower. It also has a different animation, but no, that's beside the point. It generally, this is the whole point is that it's just slower. And because it's slower, it makes it easier to guard point. Because guard points is based all on animation. So the longer an animation actually draws out of you having the shield out, the more guard you have. Now, this might actually be this is not actually the biggest part of this, though. Uh, there's such a downside to it being slower, right? However, there is a very, very big change uh, on not this move. This move stays basically the same. On this move. Now, it looks different, right? That's the whole thing. But it's like, okay, it looks different. There's not much difference other than it. maybe it looks different. There is a huge difference. This move um, here actually has the guard point front loaded but this is a guard point. and then it ends so if i want to show here i'll just show you um i 
I'll show you what the uh, I'll show you what the default first, because this would make more sense if I default. Because default is how you start off with. Okay, so default. So from your sword mode, okay. So this is just your normal one. This is the one that doesn't change much. So sword mode, guard point, right? You hit the animation, you guard, right? Change things change in X mode. If you try to actually guard, you get hit. That's because uh, sw uh, swapping from axe to sword actually has the guard point at the end of the animation. So it's not as useful as a reactionary tool, it's more of a prediction tool. If you notice, sword's at the end, my shield is at the end. So I don't actually draw the shield out and put it in front of me until the end of the animation, which makes it not as useful for reactionary... Uh... So if you're an axe mode, this makes it less useful for reactionary blocks. So I would have to protect this. I kind of failed that too because I stepped too far in, but uh, get the idea. So I would. Okay, see, see how see how bad it is for reactions. You had this is prediction. Okay, wow, that's really bad for reactions. I didn't realize how much I didn't realize how small that was. Or how. See how low that is? Like, look at that. That is so far in the back. Like, I had to. Yeah. So it's it's really hard to hit that guard point. It's not a very useful guard point to uh, like actually serve as a guard point, which is you're going to be wanting to guard, say, like in the middle of an attack. Here, I'll show you. Because normally, so, so how I said before, if you attack, you try to guard, holding on the guard button, very long time. However, if you attack the guard point, it's extremely quickly. So see how fast I can enter that. Uh, sorry. We'll see how fast I can enter this animation to guard point. Basically instant. Versus trying to hold the guard, it takes forever, so. Okay, you know what? If I could time this correctly, that'd be great. Okay, wow, that's actually <laughs> I love how I'm trying to showcase this thing, but Yeah, see, okay, that there it is, there it is. So it's not very useful for that, because say you're in axe mode, you're doing something, you can't guard point uh other than that. What changes with counter more slash is that biggest change uh axe to, axe to sword change actually uh gets front loaded instead so generally um so as i said before it was a, a back loaded uh guard point. so it wasn't very useful for reaction however this when you counter morph slash it's a front loaded one so i can react in axe mode to a guard so although it makes us slower I get a front loaded guard point, which is extremely useful. So now I get uh I get reactionary guard points on both modes. So I actually like this a lot better because I don't actually use counter morph slash to morph a lot of the time. I uh generally am either using two uh play styles, which I will one del I will delve into the next switch skill, which changes the playstyle, but I'm either using uh I'm literally doing this, which means I never interact mode anyways. Or I'm using the other playstyle, which I will show you right now. So I never actually use like Captain Morph Slash to be morphing. So having those two guard points so front loaded is extremely useful. Because it means I have more opportunities to block. Okay. We're gonna delve into the final switch skill. Um, that is condensed element slash, changing to spinning slash. Now, if you don't remember, condensed element slash is um Charging your sword. This gives file damage on hit. This gives it mind's eye. Um, right? I, however, do not find it useful. Uh, as useful as it could be. So, this is... This move gets changed for kinetic spinning slash, which I would actually recommend taking this um, most of the time. Uh, unless you really like this element slash for some reason, which I wouldn't see why, considering how cool this move is. So... Condensed Spinning Slash earns your Charge Blade into a Charge Chainsaw. Chainsaw. It's the same buttons as uh, charging your sword. So you, uh, you know, you charge your files or, you know, the animation charge your files. Hit X and you hold X. And then you uh, do that. If you uh, don't hold it long enough, it doesn't do anything. So if I, if I do that, just turn strokes. But if I hold it long enough, it becomes a chainsaw. Now, did I quickly uh, charge my files again? Okay. 
There we go. I'm gonna make him stop attacking, by the way. Uh, no. So it turns your charge blade into a chainsaw. Now, uh, you will have... To use the chainsaw, you actually do have to understand this a bit. I, when I first uh, started using the chainsaw, I didn't understand how it worked. So I got like no benefit from it. So, see, okay, do you see where my sword used to be? The sword icon, it's now an axe, right? If you see in the top left, uh, next to my shield, there's now an axe. So that's the same icon as the sword one. And the way you would get to it is through this. Generally, you would... Uh... Oh, by the way, uh, I don't think I ever mentioned this, but generally when you're trying to access that move, when you're charging your file thing, right? You want to actually have charged files when you do this because it makes the animation faster. See? That animation versus, um... That animation versus this animation. If you don't have any files to actually charge, it makes gives you a longer animation to punish you. Uh, I wouldn't mind it too much, though. Uh, when you're using the switch skill, it's totally fine to enter that animation because you're not actually aiming to hit the skill. The skill is not generally what you're aiming to hit. It doesn't actually deal that much damage. It looks cool, right? But that's just the charge attacks, right? So, here we are. We have our chainsaw now, right? If we attack, our chainsaw spins. So what this does, it actually adds extra attacks to your uh, attacks. If that makes sense. So, chainsaw mode, you know, it, it, since the chainsaw is spinning, right? You know, the whole deal. It adds extra attacks to your attacks. Now, an important thing to note is here. I'm going to show you what happens if I just attack this. One hit. Tap X. Tap X. Tap X. I'm not getting that chainsaw chainsaw, right? The reason being is you need to hold X. When you're using chainsaw, you need to hold X. So now we have extra hits. And that's that goes for every single attack. Including this one. Including including this one. It holds, so you have to hold A. If I don't hold A, it ends up being this. Right? If I don't hold A, it ends up being your normal hits. These are your normal hits. There's no extra doohickeys uh, here. Right? So you need to... The biggest thing about Chainsaw Mode, which I personally uh, didn't figure out until Day 2 of me playing, is when you use Chainsaw Mode, you need to hold X. Uh, you need to hold... Not X. You need to hold the button that you're using to attack. Which is uh, very, very, very important because otherwise you literally just... You have the Chainsaw animation, but you're not actually hitting. Uh, with the chainsaw. So that's a big important note to note for. Another big thing to note, um, if you're using chainsaw mode, you can't put away your chainsaw uh, without disabling chainsaw mode. So you can't put away your axe, I mean. So if I put away my axe, say I like morph slash, no more chainsaw mode, right? Uh, so when you're using chainsaw mode, you have to stay in axe mode to use chainsaw mode. If I sheath my weapon, no chainsaw mode, right? Even if I go back, no chainsaw. So, whenever you're using chainsaw mode, you want to be staying in chainsaw mode. Which is where a lot of the switch skill comes in handy. Because this, you know how I told you this keeps you in chainsaw? Or keeps you in axe mode? That gives you mobility, which you normally wouldn't have in axe mode because you're so slow. Okay, look, look how slow I am. I have a bait extender, by the way, so this is like more than usual. But yeah, this is kind of slow, isn't it? So this gives you a little bit extra added mobility. Uh... You can also... Okay. Um... Same time about again. So here's some, uh... Here's some interesting things about Chainsaw Mode, which are very helpful to know. Uh, but they probably won't change how you play, but they're helpful to know. Chainsaw Mode actually charges files. So... What I mean by that is that, you know how whenever I used, um file attacks in axe mode, I use the files, right? So let's just spam them, right? Use that, use that, right? No, we use files, use files, right? We've got two files left, right? Uh, the extra blips from chainsaw mode, the extra attacks you do, actually charge up the files. So you can charge your files in axe mode, meaning you never need to leave axe mode technically. So if I just go rising slash, over to slash, remember X attacks do not consume files. They, uh, they just use use of axe mode. You see that? I'm charging files. I just went from 2 to 3. If I keep doing this, go to 4 to 3 to 4. Right? I'll eventually go max out because I'm using chainsaw mode. Chainsaw mode charges up your files. Uh, and this means you can actually infinite combo without using any files. So, an infinite combo, which I generally go for, is 
either dash slam. Now you either use dash slam or you use uh, rising slash. It depends on whether you're next to the monster or not next to the monster. If you're, using, if you're next to the monster, use rising slash to keep you stationary. If you're not, use dash slam. Right, dash slam. Right, element discharge two. Now this is extra good because element discharge two is two hits, right? Two hits means extra chainsaw. Right? This is an infinite combo. Not only infinite in uh, the combo itself, but also infinite because this combo in of itself uses less files than it spends. If you notice there, I did a different attack. Uh, I'll cover that maybe. You know, I'll just cover it now. Uh, if you actually wait a bit before using X, step back. And if you, after you step back, you hit X, you actually go into that attack. Instead. If you don't step back, if you don't wait to step back, you just do rising slash. This is actually super useful for, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, say you want to hit like a spot on the monster that it, it's essentially timing. This is something you would, uh, this is something you would learn more from experience rather than me telling you. But essentially, sometimes monster tails will like fling around and you want to wait for it, so you would wait. Essentially, just the delayed attack. Right. Yeah, that's an infinite combo. And that's actually a very optimal damage combo, too. So not only is it an infinite combo, it's actually a very damage optimal combo. Being able to do that. Ah. Now, unfortunately, um, you would think that Amped Element Discharge 3, which I don't think I ever told you guys, you can, uh, so, you know how normally if I press X and A in this mode, I'll use Ultra uh, Amped Element Discharge? Well, if you actually, uh, if you actually pull back on your stick, so you pull back on your movement stick, so L, the movement stick right here, if you actually pull back on it, when you're doing the attack, and then you hit X, you actually uh, enter um, Amped Element Discharge 3 instead, which is uh, useful for stunning. This is very useful for stunning. Um, It didn't list my moves, but I hit X and A, so I, I had hit X and A while I was in Axe mode. Uh, you can also do it from Sword mode. Wait. So normally it does that. Okay, normally it does that move, but if you pull back and hit X while you're doing Ultra Element Discharge, uh, you would pull back and instead do Amp Element Discharge. So it's really hard to tell from the uh, from the things on the top that they're talking about because that's not listing one of the attacks. I'm hitting X and A again. I am entering. I'm entering Amped Element Discharge, or sorry, Ultra Element Discharge. I'm already in the animation to do it, and then while it's doing it, I'm spamming back in the X uh, to do it. It's a bit confusing because the uh, thing is not telling you what I'm doing exactly. It's missing a step there, but I essentially slap another X and A between the last uh, last and the uh, second last move. That's what I'm doing, actually. Okay, we got to stun the monster. Let me try to my uh, shield again. Now, unfortunately, for some reason, um, Amped Element Discharge 3 does not take Chainsaw, uh... Does not cha take Chainsaw's, like, uh, uh, effects for some reason, nor does it Ultra Element Discharge, so it, say I use Chainsaw, right? Uh, I'm in Chainsaw mode, right? I'm in Chainsaw mode. I should, I should get Chainsaw attack, see if I, if I show you, like, attack like this. Chainsaw attack, right? However, for some reason, if I, uh... You amped element discharge three. There is uh, no chainsaw. I don't know why. I don't know why they decide this is uh, they would do, but you know what? That is the case, unfortunately. Okay, let me charge up my uh, shit again. Same thing with uh, ultra amped element discharge. You can't uh, you can't use chainsaw effects on it. This one makes a little bit more sense, but at the same time, it still doesn't make much. Um, so if I were to... Wait, wait, whoops. Whoops, whoops. Oh, button. If we were to use Ultra Element Discharge, which is literally just X and A while in Axe Mode. Right. Um, there isn't a Chainsaw Effect either. So neither of those two last hits uh, benefit from Chainsaw Mode. So generally, when you're using Chainsaw... Like, hey, uh, charge blade, you're not aiming to be aiming for those all the time. You can still use them because they are big damage attack. Uh, it's just that you're not going to be using them like, you're not going to be using those as your main damage source. 
the main damage source is going to be uh when using chainsaw mode it's going to be um it's going to be rotating between by the way you can uh double check it's going to be rotating between rising slash and double uh double slash so i just check it. So this is generally going to be your combo right when you need to get to uh, another place in the monster you hit this this is where this comes in handy, by the way. Uh, Morphing Advance. If you hit A, as I told you before, you get Element Discharge 2. And because uh, the best move in Chainsaw Mode is Element Discharge 2, this is actually very useful. Let me just... Uh, For some reason, I keep running out of power. I really should give myself power for longer. Let's see. back uh was there anything else i think that's it okay so let's see so let's do a little recap what kind of uh play styles would you be going for when you're playing charge play uh let me just spend all my files so what kind of uh play style would you go for when you're playing charge play? there are two main ones uh with one of them having a bit of variation so number one is your basic uh like your your basic ultra element discharge charge bit. So that would be like the big attack. So I'd be using sorry, hold on. I'd be using a uh, big attack. So this would be my main damage sword. This is a very bursty playstyle. So if you like bursty playstyle, uh this is the <laughs> this is the uh, place that you would go for. You typically just hit the monster till it stops moving. Well, here we are in the most complicated weapon in uh, Monster Hunter, where we uh, we dance with the monster. <laughs> so the first playstyle is a uh, slam type playstyle, in which case you're going to be using um, this very often. You're going to be using Ultra Element Discharge extremely often. So the playstyle for this, generally, is actually a very counter uh heavy playstyle. so say the monster's attacking you right you sit around you wait you wait you wait you wait right counter pre-performance right that could be for your roar too so it could be you can counter performance roars right counter that and then you reposition right uh or you can counter it and then just straight go into it but uh generally a lot of times when you're countering a monster they might not end up in front of you so only use this if it's like right in front of you. By the way, it has very high animation commitment afterwards. You have to be very careful. Generally, you might actually just end up taking a hit, but it's fine because it deals so much damage. So when you're playing uh, Slam Ultra Element Discharge type charge blade, you're going to be doing this. You're going to be uh, fishing for an opening. And then once you find your opening, you end up going into Ultra Element Discharge. can't find an opening this uh the other um switch skill also helps a lot because it lets you 360 a um uh ultra element discharge so that's the first place now so it's essentially guard get a bunch of files spend the files for the ultra element discharge you lose all your files go back and guard again rinse repeat do that over and over again. This is pretty easy on sharpness too, because it doesn't uh, use up too much sharpness. Number two play style. Actually, no. Let me uh, let me check the variation. So then the variation of this play style, which uh, I don't use like uh, very often, but you instead of counter peak performance, you use axe hopper. So this unfortunately makes it so you don't aren't able to you know get your files as fast because counter peak performance it just makes it so fast to get files. It's essentially one. It just hits you. Uh, and then you get files, right? So unfortunately, um, this makes it so it's not as easy. So uh, let me just let me spend the files, right? So now you have to go like the old-fashioned way of charging your files by actually hitting the monster, which is, you know, yeah, the old-fashioned way. So you actually have to hit the monster to charge up. So you go like this, like this, like this, right? get out, right? And then once you do this, then you'd be fishing for instead of a normal element discharge uh ultra element discharge you'd be using the uh axe hop so you'd be fishing for something say the monster's doing still you go in the air and then you do crap ton of damage like an extremely crap ton of damage 
This is a viable playstyle. It's super viable. This does like every single one of your axe hoppers is gonna do like twice the damage of uh, a normal uh, ultra on discharge. Just do be aware that this is much harder to hit because it's so much slower. Because this is so much slower. Like it's slower because you gotta charge your files manually. It's slower because uh, you gotta you know do axe hopper. Like axe hopper. Axe Hopper is slow, like, like it's, it's, it's relatively slow, it leaves you in the air, it makes you kind of vulnerable. But the reward you get for it is good. Like that's good damage, um, especially if it's a monster that has a head that's high up. Because if you bonk them on the head, for some reason it deals like 3 times damage, I'm not really sure why. Um, this head really doesn't like that. Uh, and then your other playstyle. Which is the one I showed earlier is actually um your other play style is chainsaw mode. In chainsaw mode you would play differently. Uh however this is I would say this is like a more balanced version. Because even if you use chainsaw mode, you can still use um you still use uh ultra element discharge, but like there's nothing stopping me from like Like I've got chainsaw mode on. There's nothing stopping me from doing that. You can still totally do that. So I would say, this is why I say to take Chainsaw Mode generally, because it's not like you can't do the other playstyle when you're using Chainsaw Mode. Like, you still can. Um, because the thing that Chainsaw Mode places isn't even like part of the kit. Uh, so I would just advise taking it always, unless for some reason you really like the Sword Mode. I don't really see why you would. Hold on one sec. But yes, now there's chainsaw mode. And now chainsaw mode, you essentially do the same thing, right? You charge up your files, you get your shield charged up, you get your uh, uh, files charged up, you either charge them by attacking the monster or you know, you're know you good at countering. Let's do that, right? Um, and then once you, once you charge up your files, you just go into chainsaw mode. Okay. You can... Uh, and then once you're in chainsaw mode, you essentially just stay in chainsaw mode until um, you really need to either heal or your uh, or your or the monster has left. Now in this mode, you are slower, yes. However, having um, that that wire bug dash is extremely useful. So do remember to use this when you're using chainsaw mode. It's extremely useful. You get to you know you can 360 this by the way, so you can go in any direction when you're using. Uh, I'm gonna stretch too. So it makes it really easy to weave around the monster and uh reposition and then hit the monster. Oh, fuck. And then the playstyle would essentially be just smacking the monster. So if you have an opening, you would do like one attack. This is this is a very big um this is a very big um misconception that people make when they use chainsaw mode. They stay too long. So here's an example. See this monster stomping, right? Just imagine this is the attacker and pull the monster. It's pretty accurate, actually. Um, so whenever he stomps the attack, it's essentially imagine that's uh, one of the monster attacks. So he's stomping, right? And then you would go in after the stomp. Attack, leave. You would go in, attack, leave. Right? If you have a bigger opening, then yes, you can uh, do. You can fit in uh, on the discharge. However, those openings. That's a lot of animation commitment, so at most you can probably do that much. If the monster is down, then you 100 percent yeah, you uh Hold on one second. If the monster is down, then yes, 100 percent just repeat rising slash uh element discharge two. Oh, wrong button. Oh, I'm gonna get stomped. Okay. And yeah, so you would just repeat uh, Rising Slash and Element Discharge 2, and that is your damage, optimal damage combo, and it's extremely easy. So you just X, A. Remember to hold the buttons, and then you hit X, and then you hit A. It's extremely easy. I would honestly, uh, like, really recommend this because this is easier than a uh, Slam style charge blade by like, quite a big margin. Uh, pick up. Uh, it's also pretty decent. 
Uh, one another important note is whenever you take um, whenever you take this uh, charge blade, I would always advise you to take counter peak performance because without counter peak performance, you can't do this. And you go straight back into action mode. Because the whole thing about this is that you can't leave action mode, right? So if you can't leave action mode, it means you can't guard. However, counter peak performance can be used from uh, chainsaw mode. And then after it, you can immediately go into cadence spinning slash again. So you essentially don't have downtime. So I would never, I, I wouldn't recommend taking Axe Hopper if you are taking Chainsaw Mode because there isn't, honestly, isn't a reason to do it. Um, I don't think so. That is. Let me, let me just go there. I would never, uh, I would never take Axe Hopper with um, Kinetic Spinning Slash if you're planning to actually use Kinetic Spinning Slash. This is, for example, I, I go into Kinetic Spinning Slash, right? And then say I use Axe Hopper, I don't think I get any extra damage. I could be wrong. Let me just test it. Oh, sorry, pressed the wrong button. Yeah, you don't do any extra damage. So, yeah, there's no reason to take it uh, because you lose out on a big part of um, Chainsaw Mode's capabilities, and that is you can't guard anymore. And not being able to guard on a weapon that's so slow uh, is very, very uh, inconvenient and also. It honestly just doesn't really work. They don't mesh well. If you do take a uh, spinning slash and you plan on using it, take counter peak performance. If you don't, and uh, even if you, you you can still take it and you can still take uh, Axe Hopper, but they don't meld well is the issue. These uh, two skills don't meld well. Axe Hopper is much better for a slam style. Ah, uh, type thing. Ah, uh, there we go. Ah. Uh, Maybe make this thing stop attacking. Uh, nope. Okay. Did I cover this? Did I, uh... I think I did. Uh, I'll just cover it one more time. So... If you want to charge your, uh, files, the best combo to do that is going to be XA, charge slash, okay, charge it, shield bash, charge slash. Uh... You charge your files. Okay. So, here, let me just do a demonstration. Did you charge slash? Right. So you charge slash twice essentially. So you shield bash in between. You charge the files. Shield bash. You charge the shield. You go back and rinse repeat until you get your second round of files. All right now you have all your files. Ah. Uh. I think that's uh, good for the whole crash course. I, I did this way longer than I needed to, I think. Uh, I uh, definitely spoke for much longer than I needed to. Where does this even go? Hold on, I need to figure this out. Someone mentioned it. Someone mentioned wondering where the heck this went, and I actually don't know. Oh, it's Buddy Plaza. Ah, okay. I wonder I never found this thing. Let's go fight a monster. We'll show some uh, application. I think Diablos is a probably a good option. Hmm. Diablos is a good option. I'm charge fight. Uh, I think Tigrex works a lot better. So I'll show you slam style of counter peak performance first. Uh, I don't need to actually need a sword. So I'm just Tigrex, I think, is a decent option for showing this. I actually, what's a better, uh, what's a better, like, option to show this? I'm trying to look. It would be an easier monster. That would make more sense. Not Mizutsune, it's a bit too funky. Uh. Oh, you know what? Poofy Poof is actually a really. Not for showing this.
So here is usually the plan you would do. You go in. You go in uh, to the hunt, right? Uh, and generally, a monster, if it's a uh, literal, if it's anything but like a Rogi, if it's anything bigger than like a Baggy or, you know, those, those um, Raptor type monsters, it will have a roar and the roar will, uh, you know, actually roar you. It'll actually stun you. So, but because you have counter performance, uh, the roar actually ends up being coming come charged for you. And it's actually really easy to do because counter performance is so long. So generally your steps when you're doing the, when you're going to the hunt, you walk up to the monster, you slap it. Okay. Slap it once. You're not slapping it for damage, you're just slapping it to aggro it. Uh wait for its roar, counter performance, you get your charge. Charge up your shield using that charge. Uh then when the monster uses its first attack, you counter performance the second attack. That is the optimal. Uh sometimes you might not be able to get the second one, but generally you should be able to get that roar off because uh Um for most monsters, it's not too difficult. You just have to figure out the timing. Lock it, right? Look at that. Lock it. Sorry, force of habit. I accidentally used the uh, Alright, see? And then now you would just uh just walk around, use your sword mode mobility, right? The fact that you can um anything from anywhere and then you would uh slam the monster and there's an opening and there's another opening like him wrong a second time just count three performance and then um slam him again and you just essentially repeat this every time oh. all right those dead See, now this is a situation where I'm not able to counter because I had missed him, so instead I'm just gonna hit him with charge. So then I look for another opening, right? Just walking around. Not looking for too much. Not an opening. This is an opening. So you wait for an opening, and then you slam. Fortunately, I missed because he backed off, but you do, you will miss. I will say you probably miss like maybe like 60% of your, uh, Hard played uh, slams. And if you want to stun the monster, you pull back. Do an uh, element strength 3 instead. There we go. Now, I can do full blast on him. Do standing stuff. Okay. Third shield, your combo, shield bash combo with a. A little good tip, um, I didn't say earlier, if you actually use Fade Slash backwards, it puts you in perfect range after your uh, sword combo to slam him. So if you say you're slapping him, if you're slapping him like this, and you want to do an uh, Ultra Element Discharge, Fade Slash backwards, it puts you in perfect range to uh, hit him if you didn't walk away. That's generally the gist of how you would uh, play... Uh, I call it, I call it slam style. It used to be called uh, SAED style because it used to be called super amp element discharge. But now it's called ultra amp element discharge. So I guess it's called UAD style now. I want the wire bug got a sheet though. Okay, charge. Charge your shield. Back him. Here you Charge your other thing. Don't go into chainsaw mode because you don't have chainsaw mode generally. <laughs> it's just a force of habit. That's uh, usually what I do. I'll show I'll show the one I'm more familiar with later. He has an opening here, right? Go for the uh oh, this discharge, ultra discharge. Okay. He just shat on me. <laughs> Okay, I saw that coming, but for some reason I decided to try to play. I don't think I deserve that guard, but that you, know, you can see the notice that I like fully missed that guard. But because it lasted so long, it, I still got it anyways. So yeah, that is um, a big plus to this guard point, is that it, for some reason it's really forgiving. 
Don't be like me and miss that. Everybody gets to miss this, right? It's uh, essentially... I'm playing this a lot more like clearly. I usually like go in and also like try slapping him. Like if you have openings, try and slap him. That's generally what you're supposed to do. Even if it's not for charge, just go for the extra damage. However, that ends up making you uh, do mistakes like that. Get in range. Keep doing that. Rich repeat. If you can, do the peak performance because it's faster. Not like a lot. That is, however, dependent on the monster hitting you. Which is not always the case. Or he hits you again afterwards, which, you know, kind of cancels it. Which is why I think it's better to just move after peak performance. Because it doesn't always happen that you have the perfect opening. I could have done it there, but... Yeah. Kind of missed. You want to hit head on that? Go backwards. Do fade slash. Get into the perfect range. They don't get hit. <laughs> oh, that was a mistake. Lock it. Guard point. No. If you don't have peak performance, you can guard point. I just did it there to show that you can. Sometimes you won't have the uh, option to have that move. A lot of this comes down to muscle memory, eventually. Because um, I, it is, it is understandable that this is like extremely hard to remember every single move um you just have to remember that there are certain button combos that would do certain things so uh generally hitting x and a together uh puts you further into a combo so if you don't know what you're doing but you know you do want to go into a combo generally just spamming x and a works it doesn't matter which mode you're in uh, so like spamming an X, X and A from here, it's advancing slash, right? Shield bash, and then it puts you into uh. This. So, just spamming X and A, honestly, like if you don't know what you're doing yet, um, you, but you do know you want to advance your combo, uh, hitting the X and A buttons together will advance your combo, no matter what mode you're in. Even if I do it from Axe mode. So if I uh, do from Axe mode, well, first of all, in Axe mode, X and A just literally goes to your last hit, so. Right? And then from sword mode, hitting X and A multiple times also puts you into your combo. Alright. Got the performance. There we go. I'm gonna get that is. Yep. That's a unfortunate thing about uh, Ultra Element District is that it has extremely high element animation uh, commitment. Like you can you can already use the move and have all the damage go through, and you'll just be sitting there for an extra few seconds. Ah, uh, force of habit. I can't even see the monster. Where'd it go? He actually floats for himself. This is kind of smart. Oh, oh, he's doing his thing again. Oh, interesting thing, by the way. Um, if you really need to guard point, or if you really need to like stop an attack while you're uh, chief, hitting ZR uh, has used a morph slash, but morph slash is actually a guard point. So uh, you do have a little bit of extra guard point to start. Uh, 
Uh, I just kind of like uh, up here. Uh, I don't even. Gonna, I'm not even gonna try to revive him at the moment. I don't feel like it. So if we really need a guard point, like this Rathen is about to roar, or or, or tail slam. Let's just say I'm in. Uh, I'm in chief, right? And I really need the guard point. There we go. Guard point, right? That was me hitting uh, ZR. ZR does this. If you don't know. Is that there is a mini guard point on the front of it? It's a bit hard to do because it's the it's the it's the fastest guard point because it's a draw move, but it is there. So you have the option to guard if you really need to pull out a uh, guard during a shoot. That's something I found out very late into my uh, me using the weapon. But it did prove like extremely useful. Uh, because there are a lot of times as charge blade, where you will sheath your weapon, you're drinking potion, uh, and you need to unsheath your weapon, but unsheathing your weapon takes time, uh, and you're still vulnerable while doing it. So being able to just guard from a sheath position, uh, having that knowledge. Yes. I didn't need to do that. I already had full files. Bad timing. Uh, yeah. Don't always. I, I I do find that trying to do a trying to do a ultra element discharge after a um, performance does end up getting you hit most often because monsters like to have follow up attacks. Uh, other than this one, I think this one's safe. I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, me immediately. Yeah, no, I think it's just a universal probably just reposition. Why is this a good off yet? Probably because I'm not using... Okay. Oh, that's an unfortunate case. Uh, that's that's one of the times where you saw where uh, having charge uh, blades performance last so long actually ended up hurting me because animation was too long. And it ended up like, not long enough, but then a bit too long. I, I ended up getting hit after I was uh, down from it. Uh oh. Ah, I didn't block that? Surprise. No tail for you. Generally what you want to do is more it's actually uh like a dancing slash to do that. Gives you a little bit more room for error. Uh it's not that much room. For Apparently this guy just likes to hit me. There we go. I didn't even hit the hit. Ugh, sad. You want to hit that hit. It's like most of the damage. You want to hit the uh, physics clip of that attack because it is a lot of damage. Like, files are a chunk, but they're mostly extra. After roars, I think, is safe. I don't trust it. Fine. Mm, I want to say that's safe. Remember, you can also dodge. It might be a weapon for shield. They also have a weapon that is an extremely good dodge. Just like a sword and shield. At least not when you're not an actor. There we go.
Okay, now I'll show you the, um... The, uh, what's it called? The chainsaw version. Which, this isn't the one I usually do use, so if you've seen me, uh, just play... Uh... Monster Hunter, and you see me try the charge blade... Um, then you've probably already seen this, but I'm gonna show it anyways. Because I think it's important to show in practice. This is the one I'm more familiar with. Should I skip the animation? Then, So, next version of this I'll be showing is, um, Chainsaw Charge Blade. So, let me just quickly check if I have the right sort of skills. Right. Oh, he's not even in here. Hold on. Yeah, I have the right skills. Okay. Eat and then we'll go up. Uh, so chainsaw mode is the uh, mode that I'm more familiar with. So I I do think that this is probably the better mode in this uh, game, just because um, slam mode, like UAD mode, is slow. I, that's I will just say the UAD mode is slow. Even with all the mobility and 360 UADs you're able to do, it is slow. Um, and because it's slow, it only works against slow monsters. If you try to fight a faster monster with it, you will most likely miss, uh, get frustrated, and yeah, then you won't be uh, liking the weapon. Because it's just impossible to hit a fast monster with uh, UAD. Unless you're like a prediction god. Um, but even then, uh, unlike Greatsword, if you get bonked, if you get like bonked while you're doing prediction, uh, you don't get to shrug it off because you don't have attack. over there so it plays out very similarly um however the main difference is that uad mode more burst damage uh chainsaw mode has more consistency. we go here we do the same old thing right but then oh whoops generally after the first condensed uh generally after the um the first or the second performance I use in this chainsaw mode. But ignore me getting hit like around the round of beginning of this. For some reason he's being super aggro. Right, and then I would just go, go chainsaw mode and then I would. Right. So you literally just sit in chainsaw mode. And then you fish your openings. And these openings are much smaller. You do less damage. Right? However, this is a lot more consistent because you're not using files, which means you get to, you know, be in the fight for longer. Uh, you have an extremely long reach, so it's not hard to hit the monster. It's really just the case of going in and out, going in and out, hitting him constantly, frequently, uh, and not getting hit. And then if you do are able to get hit, you just cut your performance because. Uh, counter free performance can be used from Axe Mode, which means you can do it from Chainsaw Mode. And since counter free performance also chains into Chainsaw Spin, you can essentially turn off the Chainsaw counter free performance, which, you know, it automatically does that by itself, and then just go back into Chainsaw Mode. So you basically never, uh, leave Chainsaw Mode. So this is why I say, uh, it's like just one hit in, one hit out, because using the second hit is extremely risky. Only use the second, like, only use element to stretch It's extremely strong move. Like, here, I'll use it here. Extremely strong. However, it has the problem of being too much animation committed. So I would suggest just doing this. It's both easier, still does great damage. Like, this is not, you're not losing much damage from uh, doing this. Because, uh, overhead slam and rising slash are pretty decent damage. Especially overhead slam. Here, here's an opening I can use. 
And then you okay, leaves, okay. and that's like the only time you would uh close your chains up. Either he leaves or your low house knee drift close. Now this playstyle doesn't look as flashy, I, I'd say, at least in my, my opinion it's not as flashy, probably because I've played it more, so I've seen it more. But it is extremely effective and consistent, because this will work against every monster. You don't have to worry about the monster being too fast, you don't have to worry about the monster being too big, too small. Uh, no, you don't have to worry about the monster being too small, generally too big is not a problem. Um, it's actually better for slam style. Perfect timing. Now, here's the thing. Uh, in this mode, uh, Element Discharge 1 actually becomes useful. I totally forgot to mention this, but look how close I am. I don't want to overhead slash, because if I overhead slash, I won't have time for for uh, Element Discharge 2. Because overhead slam is slow. Like, look at this. That is slow. It does more damage, yes, but it's slow. And because it's so slow, if you do have an opening, uh, if you do have an opening where you can use element discharge too, but you wouldn't be able to if you had used um, overhead slam, because overhead slam plus element discharge two is just too much animation, you can uh, use element discharge one to do element discharge two, and this is much faster. Element discharge one is so fast. Now this does you can't repeat over and over and over again because it does use more files than it uh, creates, but you know you can uh, mix it in with. Overhead slams, uh, which you're going to be using all the time. Then you can mix it in with things like this, rising slashes, right? Should cut his tail soon, there we go. Another thing, remember, morphing slash, or uh, advancing slash, or no, advancing wire bug? I don't remember what it was called. But you can also use that. If you want to get to another side of the monster, you can use that. Say so I want to go over there. And I just go like that. Just make sure you have enough files. You don't want to run out. I unfortunately ran out of files there because I charged my shield. That's another, um, that's like also the only other reason you would leave charge, uh, chainsaw mode, because we need to charge shield. So I guess there are three. If your monster's left, you need to heal or you need to charge. Case in point, right now I need to heal. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, you don't have to care about the fact that you don't have files to make the animation faster if you're just trying to get the mode. Because uh, there, I didn't even uh, have any files to charge. I just used the animation. Oh, and remember, because uh, because Element Discharge 2, the double slash, is a file using move, you can 100% sh uh, uh, stun the monster. It's not as strong using Element uh, Discharge 3 to stun the monster, but it is still a little bit. I guess I would slow again. Oh, he's gonna leave him right now. This is the uh, place that I'm much more familiar with. It, it's like strangely safer, even though you're spending less time in sword mode, which would be. It's, it sounds counterintuitive that you would be safer in axe mode, but I do think that you would actually are safer in this mode. Just because you're actual attacks that come out are less commitment. Meanwhile, still doing decent damage. Um, I'll do one more of these afterwards where I'll show you the Axe Hopper one, and I've actually not used this very often, so probably doesn't really... probably not do very well in showing it, but you know, the idea is there to use Axe Hopper.
here I'm also I'm very close, I don't need to use overhead slash. Here I'm also very close, I don't need to use overhead slash. Just don't overuse that. It's a good it does no damage. Uh this is like no damage. Right? But it's a short cap pose, whereas overhead slash is a long cap pose. Longer and also slower. Uh can I even carve this thing with like, me ripping? I don't know if I can. I think my dog and my uh oh, I forgot this. Now we'll try the uh, last one, which is Axe Hopper. This is um, one I am very unfamiliar with. However, I just do, I do still know the idea around it. I just might fuck it up a lot. <laughs> I already I messed it up a lot already inside the um, inside the of the um, what am I saying? Inside the training area. I messed it up a lot inside the training area. So. I'm definitely gonna mess it up here, but I, I can at least show you the idea of what it's supposed to be. This is Axe Hopper. Oh, I also forgot to mention that you can do uh, normal Amp Element Discharge 3 from uh, Axe Hopper. Which, the more I say this, the more I realize uh, how much I forgot to say. This is a lot to say. So you can also stun the monster using Axe Hopper. Axe Hopper if you really switch. So which I actually, let me, let me actually try that. Uh, I think it's the A button. That would make sense. It's the only button left. Why is there Rajang on the map? Yes. Alright, so since we don't have peak performance too, we have to uh edit this normally. If you use guard points and guard. I probably could have discarded. But remember, guards are uh, guards have, a uh, are not as good on charge plate unless you're just sitting there guarding because, uh, you don't have good animation time coming in to guard. Axe Hopper, if I didn't think he was gonna roar, but I definitely think he's gonna roar soon. No, maybe he's not gonna roar. Alright, well, that's unfortunate. Yeah, you would hit A. That is fun. So, this is why Axe Hopper is, I find it. Look, that guy, he went away just to. Ah, oh, got it. He's roaring. This is why I find Axe Hopper more inconsistent, because although it's amazing damage, this is, this is like the most burst damage in the game, I think. Like, even bigger than Greatsword. Uh, not in a single hit, but like, in a one single move. But, there's just- it's- it's an extremely high amount of animation in the game. And he just leaves half the time. There we go. I didn't hit him in a good spot, though, so I didn't deal as much damage as I could have.
And remember, because uh, we don't have performance, every time we uh, do use Axe Hopper to SAED, we do have to start uh, up manually. Too slow. Yeah. Like Axe Hopper is a great move if you know how to use it, but it's very, very slow. And it's definitely not beginner friendly. I feel like that's very good either. I'm trying to stun him right now. Because if I stun him, I can. Uh... Oh my god! If I can stun him, I can at least get a uh, good Axe Hopper like when he's standing still. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now we go here. Uh, well, here's the issue. That's the wrong way. I don't know the distance for that. I probably like the normal SAP. Oops, wrong button. I instantly press for peak performance. I think you can definitely do something with this. You can definitely do well with this. It's just very hard, and honestly, the reward for it is not like, extremely good. It's look how hard it is to hit that. It's like much harder than a normal um, like, UAD, just because every, you're you're mo you're moving while you're doing the UAD, whereas normally you're stationary while you're doing the UAD. So it's like more factors. You don't not only do you have the factor for the enemy moving, you have to factor for yourself moving. Just launching this way. And I do think that hurts the uh the move a little bit. If it was faster, if that's not was faster, I think it would solve the problem. See, now I can't, uh, I can't Axe Hopper because if I Axe Hoppered there, he would have literally not gotten hit. Axe Hopper really wants that, uh, they just left. <laughs> what did I, what did I get? Like, two Axe Hoppers the entire point? Time. I know I haven't been getting them, like, very optimally, but geez. Oh. Why does he see me? Come on, trip. Like, and this is a Pookie Pookie. Pookie Pookie is slow. <laughs> Imagine trying to use Ox Hopper on a fast monster. I feel like it would literally be impossible. There's a good hit. That was, yeah, that was a good hit. See, that's, that's what you call a good hit. See, and if you miss the hit, like, you just get normal damage. Or, no, you get less than normal damage, because you're not, uh, you're not getting that bonus from Axe Hopper being, uh, so strong. Because Axe Hopper only affects the physical part of your damage. It doesn't affect the piles, unfortunately. I don't think so, at least. It definitely doesn't feel like it does. But check this thing. Maybe you should just use Axe Hopper for Axe Hopper riding. I think it's weird. I think about it. Even though it is still, like, Way less damage. Let's look at that damage. What, what if I just do Axe Hopper again? Hold on. It's not as much because unless you have files, you don't do a second hit. I forgot about that. So you still have to charge your files. <laughs> not because there's no file damage, because if you don't charge your files, uh, Axe Hopper doesn't have as much. I accidentally guard pointed there. That was really cool. Uh, there's something wrong there, but... I definitely missed a hit there, I don't know why. Tired.
Okay, I'm back live. Okay, that was a bit weird. Uh, I quickly just left. Don't worry about it. Uh, am I learning something? I mean, I gotta double check something. Uh, I think maybe if you don't hit the first hit of Axe Hopper, I don't think he deals much damage. Kind of like how Charge Blade, if you don't hit the first hit of True Charge Slash, you don't get as much damage. Let me let me just double check. Because I, I definitely wasn't dealing the, the 600 that I did earlier. Even though I hit his head. But that's because I think I was missing. What if I hit the first hit? Well, I honestly can't tell. That felt like more damage. It definitely did more. And I didn't even hit an optimal body part. What if I just do it without any files? Hold on. Well, that'd be great if, you know, uh, <laughs> I actually do it. Stop running me over, please. Well, that didn't hit. Well, I mean, that's still 200 damage. A lot of damage. Okay, well... Oh, my audio... Oh, not, not just my audio, that's my computer being weird. You feel so mobile. <laughs> I think it max move his ass. <laughs> uh, no, I, I okay. I definitely think if you, it's just it's just so slow. It, it's like, oh god. There's a, definitely a time and place for it, but I can't seem to figure out what it would be. <laughs> it's too slow. Even in the air, you can't hit it. Like, I can see it being, like, having potential, but it's just so difficult to hit. I feel like it's lost all potential. It's also kind of low range, because you, uh, kind of do a weird thing in the air. Well, oh, it needs left. I had to read up on this. I think it's one of those things where it's like, if you don't hit the first hit, um, you don't get as much damage. Although I could be wrong, and I'm just, because it's very variable, the damage. If you hit the head, of a monster for some reason this like thing does like an incredulous amount of damage it like the body like much much less still more but like much much less FBI, oh the key for kite kite you see this is a this is a raid hi how you doing Rukka. I was doing, um, well, I, I was saying, I was gonna say, the raid alert is extremely loud. I was gonna say I was teaching a, uh, Charge Blade crash course, but at the same time, it was so, like, scuffed that I'm not even sure. I think there is, a uh, let me see here that I think maybe hitting the first hit does, in fact, damage. What was that? What was that damage number? Uh, sorry, I'm not I'm not playing this Opoly right now because I'm trying to figure out I'm trying to test out the numbers at the moment. If I was actually playing this moment, well he died. <laughs> yeah, I do think it's one of those things kinda of like free choice list. Hey, I was just uh hey. Yo, he, it's a Keith or kite. Is it Keith or Kite? They sort of great. Uh we were just um so today, I, I just randomly, spontaneously decided to try and teach a uh, Charge Blade uh, crash course. So, for people that don't play Charge Blade, if they're just playing Charge Blade, they um, learn some basics of Charge Blade. Because uh, this is a very uh, complicated weapon. Let's see what you were up to. Playing New World? New World, the MMO? New world again? New world. New world. What's new world? New world. New world. That's the MMO, right? Or is it Dark Souls? No. Uh, I don't actually know what this is. 
I don't actually know what this is. <laughs> I'm not actually sure what this is. It looks like an MMO to me, but like, I'm not sure. <laughs> Amazon's MMO. Okay, so it is an MMO. I've heard about it. Um... Oh, hi, Westy. I heard about it. I uh, wasn't really sure what it was all about. Like, what's the hype all around it? Hold on, there's something wrong with my vocal cords. Uh... Huh, is that normal? Are your vocal cords supposed to be flat? <laughs> uh, long enough time to no see from like three days ago? Uh, yeah! Yeah! You're the cat, right? Pretty sure you're the cat. Swan, you were streaming and had to cut it short. Oh, why'd you have to cut it short? What's the recommended you? So here we are. Ah! You guys want to see my Cards Play Crash Course? I did it like, uh, two hours ago, but, um... I, I can do it again. No, I'm not forgetting that you're Weeb's brother. I'm just like, you're the cat, right? I'm like, I'm pretty sure you're the cat. Like, I'm like 99% sure you're the cat, but like, at the same time, I'm like that 1% sure, not sure. <laughs> uh, Acted Raptor, thanks for the follow. You are the cat? Okay. What are they doing? You guys want me the, uh... You guys want me to recover the, uh, charge plate? I could do it again. I really want to do it again. Uh, but I don't know if better if people have seen it yet or not. Whee! I could do it again. Hold on. Just go to the training area. This is literally the only thing I wanted to do today. Like, literally just show what the heck this weapon does, because it's a bit complex. A bit complex. Bad complex. Uh, there we go. All the default skills. The play monster hunter. Uh, then this is still gonna be confusing. Sorry, if you don't play monster hunter, this is gonna be like super confusing. Like this is gonna be absurdly confusing. If you don't, uh, if you play monster hunter, this is still gonna be confusing unless you already know the charge blade. Uh, because this weapon's a bit of a, a bit of a finicula. <laughs> It's a bit of a... There's a reason it's ranked hardest weapon to master. <laughs> hardest weapon to pick up, hardest weapon to master. Uh, let me just... Oh, did random bullshit, uh, by the way. I, I found out you can dunk bombs. <laughs> you can dunk bombs. Hilarious. Red Blade is your favorite? Cool, nice, perfect. Now you understand what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, let's get our Palico and Palamute to sit over here so they don't attack. Come over here. Okay. Sit there. Okay. So, this is the Charge Blade, right? The Charge Blade has a sword and a shield, which means because it has a shield, you can guard with the arm. Okay. Um... It has a very, very long uh, sheet time. I think Charge Blade has the second longest sheet time in the game. Uh, and it has two modes. So we've got Sword and Shield mode, which you're seeing right now. This is just basic pull out your X button. Okay. Okay. Pull out your X button. If you move and you press X, uh, you do a forward slash when you're sheet. And then it also has an axe mode. And you can access X mode by uh, actually guarding from sheet. So that will actually put you an axe smash. And now you're in axe mode. You can also um, switch between them. I will tell you that later. You played it for like eight hours and used the insect glaive. I think it's very fun, but can 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 I'm gonna say I'm gonna assume you said can be confusing. Yeah. Uh, no weapon, no weapon really compares to the complexity of this. Uh, the closest you can get is I think. Um. Good question, what would be the next one? I think Gunlance. I think Gunlance would be the closest. Second. And uh just difficulty of picking up. Okay. So in sword mode, 
this is what we're going to start off with. I'll cover most of the sword modes first before I enter axe mode because this is kind of like a stepping stone. You need sword mode for axe mode. Alright, so in sword mode, if you just spam X, so this is your basic combo. Weak slash, return stroke, spinning slash. That is the end of the combo. This is a basic, basic combo. Weak slash, return stroke, spinning slash. This is not what you'll be looking for most of the time. So, generally you're not going to be looking to use this combo because it doesn't really do much for you. It does no damage. Uh, it also doesn't charge up your files. Um, now, I'll talk about files in a sec, but essentially files are a resource that charge blade can use and it is a lot of what uh, the charge blade resolve revolves around which is why it's called charge blade because you're using files like batteries to charge the weapon okay if you hit a you get this charged rising slash now this is kind of weak but that's because this is a uh charge attack what wrong button Sorry. this is a charge attack so you actually have to hold it down but if you hold it down and you let go at the right time which is when it goes pump. When it goes pump and it uh, flashes, that is the correct time. If you hold it for too long, you end up doing the same move as uh, if you just didn't charge it. So this is charge double slash. This move is your bread and butter when you're in sword, because this move charges up your files extremely, uh, extremely well, and also does a decent amount of damage. So here we'll just show you. I'll just show you by keep hitting this uh, dummy. You'll notice that my little cups in the corner, those are called files, uh, the containers have now turned red. So what that means is that when I now store my files, I will now store files. Um, essentially, this goes from um, white, which does nothing, to yellow, which stores three files, and red, which stores five. So if I show you right now, if you hit guard, uh, I'll show you how to store your files. So you hit guard, hit A, start your files. Now, my cups in the corner, which are my files. So I have my files in the corner. They have went from red to now filled and white. So if they're filled, it means you have the resource stored. Uh, the color of the cup means how much your sword is charged, and the uh, contents of the cup means how much uh, files you have. Now files are going to be important later on when we talk about axe mode because that's generally where you're spending files. Uh, I think I think that's actually the only place you can spend files, axe mode. Um, but we'll go back to that later once we cover a bit of the sword. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, one of the very important moves you gotta remember, uh, when you're playing, um, the sword mode of Cardblade is actually called the Shield Bash. Now, the Shield Bash is essentially, um, X and A. If you hit X and A after any, uh, action, so, I think that was some boost dodges. Let me, let me just... No, it is not because you judge. Okay, after any attack, if you do any attack and then you hit X and A, so say just using just weak slash, right? So I'll use this weak slash example. If I hit X and A after X, I do a shield thrust. But what shield thrust does is it doesn't do much damage. Like here, if I go up to the monster, right? Weak slash. Right, it's not much damage. It's way more than weak slash just because weak slash is actually really bad. Uh, but it's not more than something like double charge. See, like charge slash is uh, a lot more so it's not much damage however this unlocks a lot of options because uh shield bash can be used after every move so you know how uh xxx ends and then just you know it ends and ends and you know it's it's not a it's, there's no combo finish on that you can shield thrust at the end in fact you can shield thrust at any point in it right there or here or you can shield thrust at the end of charge right you shield thrust after literally everything as long as it's an attack. You can literally even shield thrust off of a weak slash, I think. Uh, actually, I don't think you can. Nope, you still can. The shield thrust is an extremely important move. Not because of the damage, but because it lets you transition into other attacks. Um, and... Like, yeah, it lets you transition to other attacks that really lend uh, itself to being very extremely useful. Um, for charge blade. Uh... One of those is the infinite combo for charge. Uh, so, if you want to infinitely uh, combo and gain charge, here's a combo. So this is this was the bread and butter combo for charge blade when you're in sword mode. This is charge double slash, shield dash. Charge double slash, shield dash. Charge double slash, shield. Dash. It's literally just this. 
This is the combo. You can mix in like an X over there every now and then. All right. Shield bash. The reason you shield bash though is not because of the damage, it's because it's faster. And it's also smooth. See? Being able to do that uh, lets you charge your files fast. Now, why would you want to charge your files fast? Well, first of all, uh, let me just reset the files there. Uh, files can be used in axe mode. And at a change in axe mode, you guard. You hit X. So, when you're in axe mode, uh, so that was Morph Slash, by the way. So when you're in Axe Mode, um, you got a few options. So if you hit X, you get a Rising Slash. If you hit X again, you get over Slash. This does not consume any files. This is the, uh, this is the not consuming files, um, Axe Mode attack. So X is like, it doesn't consume files. A is consumes files. This is, um, this combo is like, okay, but this is not what you're looking for. Uh, generally. Only when you're using a certain switch skill do you kind of look for this combo, but even then, this is still not what you're looking for. What you're looking for is a combo, uh, or at least parts of it. So in the A combo, if you actually, uh, if I hit the A button, I do a sort of lightning type attack. Now that's not lightning, that is file damage. I have an impact file on right now, uh, which is essentially just like your neutral file. Impact file is essentially a neutral file, just imagine it like it's a raw damage weapon, it's a, it's a raw damage file. It's not exactly how it works, it's uh, technically does two damage, but uh, that's just what we'll go with now for simplicity. If you notice, every time I hit that attack, there's a second attack. That is the file exploding. Um, and you've also, you, if you also uh, would put your attention over to the uh, file gauge, I have now used two files because I used two of those file attacks. This has more follow-ups, so it actually has three of these. So if you noticed uh, when the naming, when the name popped up, it said Element Discharge 1. It goes from 1 to 3. So there's Element Discharge 1, 2, and 3. So I'll show you them right now. 1, 2, which is a double slash, and 3. Pretty good, huh? Number one is always going to be extremely weak. Number two is good. Number three is extremely strong. Um, so generally, uh, and also, by the way, um, one, two, and three is also how many files pop per file spent. So number one, uh, you'll spend one file, pop one file. You Number two, you spend one file, and you get two file explosions. Uh, number three, you spend one file, you get three file explosions. So generally, you're going to be wanting to use either two or three, and you're probably not going to want to be using one uh, if you're looking for damage. Uh, let me charge up my files again, and I'll show you other things. Okay. So, now that we have covered axe mode, and we have covered um, sword mode, we can now cover... Uh, charging things because this is a charge blade. This is not a blade and axe. This is a charge blade. Now, here's where the charging comes in. When you charge your files, right, you go from those little containers that are red right now, and you charge your files, they fill up and it becomes white, right? If you, you know, if you um, charge it again, right, you can, you can get red and filled. Uh, that essentially just means that your sword is charged and you're, you have force stored files that um, doesn't really matter but yeah so you can essentially you can charge your sword and you can have files stored uh, and you put the sword charge into the shield which uh, puts the uh, sorry into the files which gives you files now here's where it gets a little more complicated because uh, now we're going to start charging the rest of our gear so we had files right files are energy source. They're essentially the batteries. We have five of them right now. You can charge your gear. So we have, if you look beside the uh, files that I have right now, I have a shield icon and I also have a sword icon. Um, the most important one to look for right now is this shield because uh, that is the generally useful one. You're going to want that one charged 100% of the time. And how you do that is you actually end up you put the files that you have in your file uh, gauge into your shield. And how you do that is through um, using 
Amped element discharge three, and then charging your sh uh, and then guarding while the wind up is happening. So if I should wait here. So if I uh, enter amped element discharge three, this is not gonna be. Wait. Go. You hit uh, guard while you're doing it, and you get um get sh shield charge. Right. See now your shield is glowing. Now that's not gonna be the usual way that you're gonna charge your shield, um, because if you noticed, we spent two files trying to get to that uh, state. So we don't have as much file energy in our shield that we sh and we should. We really want that whole five files. So how do we do that? Well, there are several ways, and that is because there are several ways to actually access uh, Amped Element Discharge 3. And I will show you right now. Um, so one of the ways to access Amped Element Discharge 3 is... Well, first of all, the one I showed you. So, you go, you know, blah, 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 okay, and you access it, right? It's a bit different now. The move is a bit different now because my shield is charged, which is another benefit of the shield. Uh, but we'll ignore that for now. Um, so, that one, basic one, that's the easiest one. Uh, however, it is not the best way to do it. Another way to do it is if you're in axe mode, you hit X and A. That's it. And then you go into it. Perfect. So that means if you're in axe mode and you want to charge your shield, you can just hit X and A, guard. And then you go into uh, the element round slash. An element uh, round slash charges your shield. That's how, how your shield gets charged. By the way. Um, another way, which this is generally the way you're going to be doing it because you charge up files in sword mode and you're probably going to be still in sword mode when you finish. Uh, is actually to um, after a shield bash if you hit X and A you actually end up in element discharge 3 so say, say shield bash right if I hit X and A again I end up in element discharge 3 or amped element discharge I call it element discharge 3 just because it's step 3 but technically the name is amped element discharge right so you can do this from any shield uh, uh, shield thrust so I can do it from the XX XA, 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 which is super easy. This is a super easy combo, by the way. They're just slap XA. Right, and then you hit ZR. You can charge your shield that way. Right. You can even charge your shield from a charge slash. As, as long as it ends in a shield thrust, you can just hit XA again afterwards. So shield thrust. Right, shield thrust, and you just keep spamming shield thrust, essentially. We'll end you up in... Uh, Unfortunately, uh, the uh, UI doesn't seem to be very good for charge blade because I am hitting an extra button. Every time I go into that mode and you hear the steam coming out of my shield, there's a move there. It's that move. Uh, but for some reason, it doesn't register that one, so it just says ZR. But I am using um, Tempt Element Discharge whenever I do that. Oh, wait, no, that does show it. Okay, uh, let's, see, so let's see that in action, okay? We charge up our uh, charge up our files. Put the files in. Right. Okay. Now we have files. We have battery source. Now we enter amp element discharge three, which would be uh sorry amp element discharge three, which is called amp element discharge. So we go slash shield bash, shield bash again. Right. Now we're in this mode, and now we have a fully charged shield without having used up uh two of our random files. This is generally the way you're going to be uh, charging your shield. You're going to be charging it from shield bash. Because it's the fastest way and also it's the only way you can do it from shield mode. Okay, now let's talk about the shield. Now that I've told you how to get into shield, what does the shield do? Well, powering up your shield does a few things. Number one, it powers up your shield. So guards are more effective. Uh, I wish I could show you, but my power, my shield is powered up. You just have to take my word for it that if I guard, uh, I'll take less, less knockback uh, than if I had the uh, shield uncharged. You just have to take my word for it now until my shield runs out of power. But yeah, so my guards are more effective. You take less damage, you use less stamina, you get knocked back less. It essentially gains a few points in guard. Um, that's how the coding works for it. And number two, you gain access to one more extra move. That extra move, like two more extra moves. Uh, but the, wait, you get you get access to uh, what is called super. Wait, 
It's called Ultra Amp. Wait, Ultra Amp Discharge. Ultra Element? No, Ultra Element Discharge. They've changed the name so many times throughout the throughout games that I've honestly been confused. So, you know how before, whenever we did, uh, you know how before, whenever we did, you know, we did this, right? Hold on, one second. Let me, let me not be stupid. You know how before, whenever we did, uh, Amped Element Discharge, it was this, right? It was like, kind of like sliding, uh, hits once, and then if I had files, it would go bang, bang, bang three times. Here, let me actually just take the files. So if I, uh, if I hit the monster now... Amped Element Discharge. Wait, three files. One big hit, three files. Right. That changes if you have your shield charged. Um, at least the, uh, the, you know, what you normally would combo it for. So if you just hit XA, 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 it becomes this instead, which is stronger. And it uses up every single one of your files. So this is like your mega big damage move. Uh, if you're wondering how it looks like, It looks like this on the ground. It's one giant slam and then a bunch of explosions behind it. So that changes into that. You can... Uh, so if you're wondering how you still access um, Amped Element Discharge, so the, the basic Amped element, dis element Discharge, not the uh, super one. Because there are applications of using both in different situations. Like, Amped Element Discharge is generally better for stunning because uh, the files are always hit on one place. Then how you do is actually you pull back during you know how um, during discharge I can guard so same idea but instead of guarding uh, when I do that animation I pull back uh, I don't have a charged shield so I can't show you but hold on give me a sec. There we go. Guard both. Alright. So... So, the way you do it is, you know how when I, uh... When I'm in the animation for Super Amped Element Discharge... Are you late for the class? Uh... <laughs> you're not technically that late. Uh, I think you're about like 10 minutes in. I, I did this twice. I did this at the start of stream and I'm doing it again now. Anyways, uh, if you, what was I talking about? <laughs> I've forgotten. All right, so if you enter uh, Super Amped Elk Discharge, um, and you pull back on the stick, so you pull back on uh, the movement stick, so you hit the left stick, and you hit X, you actually enter uh, back into normal Amped Elk Discharge. So, this. Right, instead of, uh, so you're doing this, if you pull back the X, instead of Ultra Amp Element Discharge. So normally, if you don't do anything, Ultra Element Discharge. If your shield is charged. This is the caveat. If your shield is charged. Right. Okay. Uh, what are some extra things? So some extra things uh, for the sword mode. If you are are you pressing a direction key while hitting A, uh, this... This, I know a lot of uh, newbies will kind of get messed up. Is they'll try to do charge slash, right? Which is A, but they're moving. So instead of doing charge slash, so instead of doing charge slash, so let's say you're like doing this and you want to do this, right? But instead of doing that, you end up going like this. You end up doing this. And then you start sliding. And then, and then, you, and then you start sliding. And then, and then you do that. And then you start sliding. That's because you're hitting A while pressing a direction. Now that's called Fade Slash. Fade Slash is actually extremely useful because it's a positioning tool and has a guard point on the end. Now, I haven't talked about guard points yet. I will in a sec. Um, what other moves does this thing have? Ah, yes. Last thing uh, about charging. Our sword can be charged. If your shield is charged... Let me charge my shield. If your shield is charged, you can transfer... Um, you can also charge your sword at no cost, so it's essentially a free charge. Uh, there's no nothing it takes from it. Um, but your shield doesn't need to be charged. If you don't charge it, you cannot charge your sword. When you're uh, charging files, so this is charging files animation, by the way. 
Oh, is my Wi-Fi back there? There we go. Am I back? Am I back? I think I'm back now. It says live. I'm not sure if I'm live though. <laughs> ah, god damn it! I swear to God. Yeah, I'm back. Okay, cool. Uh, let's continue where we left. So, if your shield is charged, uh, and you try to charge files, uh, you can enter another attack, which is called I think it's called like condensed element slash or something. Um, but it's essentially you charge your files and then you hit and hold X. This puts you into a similar kind of thing where you know you're charging this attack, but it's uh, this instead. So this is another one of those let go at the right time moves. If you let go too early, return stroke. If you let go too late, and you, you like overcharge it kind of deal, also return stroke. So you gotta do, uh, you gotta make sure the timing is right. The timing on this is pretty easy, like just that. So you don't have to be worried about the timing, you just have to make sure you know when this thing goes in. That's when the uh, things start shrinking and it makes a pop sound. So you don't even need files to uh, charge that. You just need a charge up shield. However, uh, because files uh, charge faster, or because uh, the file animation goes faster when you have some charged files to charge. See, I have files to charge. You notice that was much faster. So generally you want to do that after charging files. Or after a switch skill. Okay, I'll talk about later. Okay, uh, now let's talk about guard points. So, Dreadblade has a thing called guard points. So essentially guard points are animations during attacks in which your character is actually guarding even though you're not actually trying to guard. Or, no, you're not guarding. So, generally, the ways you can tell that these are happening is if you are attacking and the shield ends up in front of you. So, one attack that does this is actually the third attack in the X. Oh, the spinning slash. Right? And you're like thinking, okay, maybe that, that's not so useful because uh, you said not to use the XXX combo, right? Because it's a weak combo. Well, you can access Spinning Slash, the very last attack, from uh, a lot of other attacks that you wouldn't use. So, Charge Slash. And in Spinning Slash. So, you can get a guard point at the end of that. Your shield is in front of you for that duration. Right? He holds it out. She holds it out, and you will block. And just to show you. I kind of fucked that up. Hold on, one second. <laughs> he blocks. Right? Uh, you just have to trust me on the rest of these blocks because I, I I do know which which attacks block. Because <laughs> I, I don't want to keep doing that. Uh, another attack that blocks is you know what? No, screw it. Show them. Another attack that blocks is actually fade slash. So every time you fade slash every single direction, at the end of it, your shield ends up in front of you. This is also a guard point. Cool, right? Uh, now, one of the most useful ones is actually um, from Morph Slash. So, you know how you can transition from sword to axe and axe to sword? By hitting ZR and X, and then when you're in axe mode, you just ZR. So each of these actually has a guard point. Uh, when you're morphing from sword to axe, it has a guard point in the front. So this, when he's shoving the, uh, when she's shoving the sword into the uh, shield and the shield starts expanding, that's a guard point. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, when you're going from axe and you're going shield, the very end is a guard point, just like uh, all the other things. So if I were to go up to this thing, block. That was the sword morph slash. If you notice, it did say I said X. You know, also, if I do a little later. Same thing if I uh, do it from axe mode. So if I'm in axe mode and I go really late. Uh, right. Now, unfortunately, uh, the one in axe mode um, is a back end uh, guard point. So if I try to like reactionary guard point like this, I can't do it. It doesn't guard. It only guards at the end. So. It's not very useful for reactionary. However, the one from the the one from sword mode is a reactionary. 
So this one is a uh, reactionary guard point. You can, uh, wow, I did it so fast it didn't even look like a guard point. <laughs> yeah, this is a reactionary guard point. That starts from the front. This is extremely useful. Guard points are extremely useful because one, they actually guard better than, uh, they give more guard than guards. It's like guarding like this. Number two, uh, if your shield is charged, which I will do right now. One. If your shield is charged, they actually um, pop a file explosion. So you see, I did damage to the monster there. That's because I guarded and it was a guard point. However, if I just normal guard, no file explosion. Right. So there is actually benefit to using this in a situation you would just normally guard if you can do the time right. Because what you have to realize is that uh, because I am impact files right now, which is generally what you usually use as charge blade. Uh, not always the case, but general case. This can KO. So if the monster is hitting you with their head and you guard point them, this has the potential to KO them. So you can go, you can essentially block a monster and they will just fall over and you can hit them. Okay. Uh, let's see. What was the next thing I got to cover? Uh, uh blah, 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 blah. What was the next thing I was gonna cover? I think it's, uh... Mm. I think it's just switch skills, okay. So, Charge Blade's got two switch skills by default. They are... Morphic Advance, which is a dash type switch skill. It doesn't have iframes, I don't think. Uh, let me actually just double check. If it does, I'd be very surprised. I don't think it does, though. Does it? Does it have- wait, does that have super armor? Oh, it has super armor. Never mind. I'm surprised. It does take damage, though. Huh, it has super armor. Okay, never mind. It has super armor. Okay, it doesn't have invincibility or iframes, but it does have super armor. I'm still taking damage, that's how I can tell. Um, so, that's a, uh... Well, I found out it's a super armor move. Uh, I don't think it's a super armor move on the back end. I think it's only on the front end. Well, I mean, it's still a decent chunk. Okay, that's better. That makes it better than I thought. Then, um, so morphing advance is a attack that, or is a uh, dashing kind of skill that puts you from any mode you're in and it puts you in axe mode. Puts you in axe mode. Now you think, okay, that's pretty bad though, because you don't want to be in axe mode very often, um, because you're more open to attacks and stuff when you're in axe mode. Um, so like even if you're in axe mode, you can use it. So in axe mode, you don't like switch to sword mode. However, um, it is fast enough. Hold on. This, from, from here, you can actually just hit X or ZR, and they do the exact same thing. So ZR also does the same thing. And you actually end up uh, pulling out your sword again. So for all intents and purposes, uh, oh yeah, by the way, this is a guard point. For all intents and purposes, this is pretty safe. Just dash move. More mobility for you. This is especially useful when you're using uh, chainsaw mode because uh, it, uh, what I'll tell you later is that chainsaw mode you do not actually use sword and shield mode very often, which means you're stuck in this mode and you're, you're waddling around at like snail's pace. In which case, this becomes very useful because it's extra mobility. Okay, second switch skill that I have. Uh, I need you guys to pay attention to my file charge uh, right now. My file charge is zero. Now, the move I'm about to show you is called Switch Skill. It's called Counter Performance. Now, you do it by hitting ZLNA. It causes you to guard. Now, this guard... Um, this guard, actually... Number one, it's a guard, so... Cool. Number two, it charges your files completely by itself. You don't have to charge your files by hitting the monster. You can just charge your files by using this move. It's very, very reactionary too. It's not like it has a lag or anything. Like you can just do it super last minute and you'll still get it. So that's very good. Uh, this basically, it's like extremely good utility. This is uh, probably the best firebug guard in the game just because uh, giving charge. It's like number one gives charge. Number two, it's the extremely good guard. Uh, number three, it lasts forever. Look at this. Look at that. That's like two seconds of guard. 
Guard point? You get like 0.5 seconds. It's extremely good. Um, and yes, this lets you uh, do a lot of um, quality of life. Like, you never need to. It's like, it essentially gives you the choice of using sword mode uh, at all. Like, you can literally just. Hold on. Pressing all the wrong buttons. You can literally just use Ultra Element Discharge. Bonk. Right. Do this. Right. Back off. Ultra Element Discharge. Right. When do I ever need to use my sword? Don't technically need to. If you're good with countering. By the way, you can uh, Ultra Element Discharge straight from this. Guard control. So it's like doubly as good. So that is the two switch skills. So we had morphing advance rate. Uh, and by the way, uh, morphing advance, I forgot to mention, has uh, options coming out of it too, other than just pulling out your shield. A second, all right, go. Morphing advance has other options coming out of it. Uh, if you hit A, you double element, you do uh, axe element discharge two, which is double slash uh, from axe. Now, it doesn't look very useful now because it doesn't do much damage in this mode, but when you go into chainsaw mode, it becomes pretty much uh, a staple. So remember that one. And then number two, uh, which is exceptionally good, is actually just being able to ultra element discharge out of it. And if you noticed, I turned pretty hard there. Uh, well, that's because this has 360 degrees of... Um, it says 360 degrees of turn, so if I just... I can do it straight. By the way, you're hitting X and A to do this. So I can just do it straight, right? So I can do it straight. Or I can do it backwards. I, or I can do it left or right. You get the gist. I can do it in every single direction. Not even in the cardinal direction. You can do it diagonal. You can do it like every single angle. It's 360 degrees. It is extremely versatile for that. Another thing to know about counter peak performance, you can do it from max mode. So it's a uh, it's essentially a guard point from max mode, but a really long guard point. It's extremely useful uh, for when you're stuck in axe mode and you need to guard, and you don't have you know, access to sword shield mode because you're in axe mode. Okay, let's uh, let's start switching some stuff. Here. This is uh, changing your switch skill pound to performance for now, Axe Hopper. This is Axe Hopper. Not very impressive by itself, but it's got some uh, perks to it that... Perks and combos and follow-ups that make it, I would say, viable. But I don't know if I'd say worthwhile, because this is really a style thing. So let's show you Axe Hopper. So Axe Hopper uh, has a few follow-ups. I will show you the main one first. Or sorry, I'll show you a few of the uh, sub subsidiary ones first. Uh, then I'll show you the main one. So Axe Hopper, hit X, it's just a jumping slash. Pretty decent damage, but it's not what you're looking for, right? That's that's the one you're least looking for. That was just there to see if you have filler and you don't really want to commit anything. Number two, hit A, Meter Amp Element Discharge. This one is very useful because this is uh, a way to get to high up monsters and hit them in the head for a stun. Because this is Element Discharge 3. This is the three stunning ones. And what's extra useful about it is because um, Axe Hopper is 360-able, so you can the other way too. It's kind of like, um, kind of like, uh, what's it called? Morphing Advance. You can 360. Now the last one, which is the biggest one, this is the main one you're going to be looking for. Uh, you can Ultra Amp Element the Discharge if you hit X and A after an Axe Hopper. Now, this has a special property in that it does more damage. An insanely insane amount more damage. Um, if you look at a normal uh, Element Discharge... Hold on. Or if you look at a normal uh, Ultra Element Discharge... Like this. I go over here. Right? I just go... Uh, maybe I should get closer. I should definitely... Thing. 400, right? A total of like total of like 865 damage, right? Okay. 
Let me quickly uh, charge everything up. Right, charge everything up. So that was a uh, that was about 865 damage, right? Uh, if I use Axe Hopper, first of all, I get a decent chunk of it right there. It's a lot more damage. I did a thousand one. 162 damage. Axe Hopper makes your uh, uh, Ultra Element Discharge do more damage because it's a mid-air version. Uh, it does, I think like, I think it like, uh, it adds like an extra third of damage. So if you, uh, my math on this is it, it's like about 1.3 times more damage. At least that's what I'm seeing. Like the, the uh, numbers are around there. So it's not, uh, it's not like two times more. Uh, but it is a good chunk more. And the uh, main benefit of this is that uh, you go in the air, which means you're closer to heads. Generally, you're closer to heads. And if you're not closer to heads, it still puts you in a better position to hit head than if you weren't above. Uh, because let's say if I was at the side, I would probably never be able to hit someone with an uh, a normal ultra element district, but if I use Axe Hopper, I can hit head from here pretty easily. The issue comes in with this thing is that it's way too fucking slow. Like, look at this animation. Awesome. Way too slow. It's so slow. It's like almost unusable slow. And also, I uh, figured out that no, it does, you do not in fact need to hit the first hit. I'm just being bad. Yeah, it's, it's way, 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 way too slow. Like, look at the look at the animation between that and just. Like, yes, I don't hit the head in this scenario because he's a tall monster right now. But at the same time, Jesus Christ. Yeah, the issue with this is just, it's too slow. Like, it does more damage, yes, but it's too slow. Too slow, it leaves you in the air, you can't do anything about it. Um, yes, you can 360 it, so you can catch the monster that come behind you. But it's so slow that by the time you finish this, a slow monster like Pookie Pookie, well, I'll run away. Which I quite literally had happened to me like three times. Like I was doing this, and then Pookie Pookie just kind of walked away. Like it just takes that long. So unfortunately, uh, I do like counter performance a lot more, and I would recommend this a lot more for oh, well, there, better at the weapon and less good at the weapon. So even beginner, literally from beginner to expert, I would recommend counter performance more because it's more versatile. It's a guard. It kills your files. And while Axe Hopper is cool and all, you lose the fact that you can just, you know, fill files uh, immediately. You get a better, you get a better, like, uh, attack or slam, but it's very inconsistent, unfortunate, you know? Um, yeah, so I would, I would stay with counter performance. I like it better. Uh, however, you play how you play, like to play, it's still viable. Like, this isn't an, an unviable stra uh, strategy. Because it does give so much more damage, it's just that it's really hard to pull off. I would not consider it beginner friendly. Uh, next one, we have counter more slash. Uh, actually, I will show you just more slash first because this is a bit of a comparison. So I need the uh, for this. So counter more slash. So this is normal more slash. So. The, the switch skill it changes is not actually a wire bug skill, it's actually this. So, this is normal. Okay. So, uh, I'll show you normal right now. You know how I showed you earlier how uh, this normal has like a. Hello. Hello. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, am I back? Am I back? I think I'm back. I think I'm back. All right, so that was just more slash. That's basically one, right? Now we have counter more slash. Now counter more slash extends. Number the number one uh one of the one of the most visual changes is that it makes your more slash slower. It changes the animation, which in turn makes it slower. It's so a slower, that's slower, it's slower. Uh however. So, so it makes it so your more slashes are slower. So you would think that's bad, right? But because it's slower, more uh, area for 
there's more time for the guard point to happen. So there's more like, how do I say it? It gives you more window. To use the guard point. That is number one change. Uh, however, the very important fact a lot of people miss is you know how earlier I said um, axe mode to sword mode at a back end uh, guard point. Well, counter more slash actually changes that uh, and changes it so both guard points are front end, which is much better because front end guard points mean are reactionary guard points. You you can actually use them instead of having to predict. So here we go. We guard it straight from uh, axe mode, just like just like how we guard it straight from shield mode. That was an axe, but right? Right. Uh, it's a bit hard to tell because they're doing it so last minute, but if uh, I was doing that, it's a bit hard to see, and it looks really funky considering uh, it doesn't look like you actually guard for a good section. But when the moment your uh, hunter's hand punches the axe to get the shield back, it's already guarded. Be hard to see. It, it, it's a really funky, weird looking, but it, it's an instant guard point. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to block this. But yes. So that becomes a front end guard point. Don't mistake it for uh, a back end guard point because I've, I've made that mistake. Last one. So this changes uh, kind of element slash, which was uh, this. I'm actually going to use this stomp like, at the moment. Okay, so this changes um, this, the uh, the power of the sword mode. This is uh, this essentially, you know, your power of your sword move. It increases your uh, every time you hit your sword. Now you do five damage, and then you also have mine. Okay, I've, I've already said this, um, so it changes that oops, to chainsaw mode. So chainsaw mode, it, it uses the exact same buttons. So you would charge your files, right? And then you would hold X, and then you get condensed spinning slash. So, in the spinning slash, now you have a powered up axe, and you're also an axe now. So this is a big change, is that once you end this move, you don't end up in sword mode anymore, you're an axe. Also, your axe is powered up. So why is your axe powered up? So now, your axe spins whenever you attack in axe mode. So this has changed your axe from being a sort of slam, sort of slam, uh, kind of weapon to a more, uh, like consistent damage slicing weapon. This is how it works. Okay. So, everything is basically the same. There's no, like, change moveset or anything. Like, see, rising slash, right? You got your, got your rising slash, and you got your overhead slash, and I'm still doing the same amount of damage here. Like, there's literally nothing has changed. It just looks cooler, right? Uh... You know, even the files, like, there's nothing changing, and you're like, hey, what's up with that? Uh, why does nothing change? Well, you need to hold down the button. So, reason why I'm not doing any extra damage right now is because I'm not holding down the button. So if I hold down the button on my Rising Slash here, I get a bunch of 17s, along with the initial hit. So this is the whole deal of X, uh, Chainsaw. If you hold down the button on your attack, so every single attack, you can't just do the first one, so you get X, you get X and hold. And if you don't want to do A, A and hold. A and hold. Right. Every single one of those moves that I just showed you, uh, if you hold the button, it will let you uh, chainsaw mode. It will let you chainsaw mode. Uh, now, unfortunately, for some reason... Um, okay, so, unfortunately, for some reason, this move does not have chainsaw mode. I don't really understand why. I feel like that would be a chainsaw mode move. But yes, uh, amped element discharge and also ultra amped element discharge do not have um, do not have it for some reason. So if I if I pull it, hold on. If I pull it, chainsaw mode, right. and I go into an ultra amped element discharge, it also does not have uh, chainsaw mode. Even though I'm holding down X, got nothing. Uh, maybe I have to hold down A X A. It's the only way I can think of it. I actually haven't used this yet. No, no difference. Yeah, there's no difference. 
So those last two moves, unfortunately, do not have chainsaw mode. However, everything else does. And this is where a lot of the switch skills kind of meld together uh, and do things together. Because, um, actually, I probably mentioned that. Uh, sorry, I, I forgot to mention. Uh, so chainsaw mode is different in this game than world. If you played world, chainsaw mode used to be a uh, separate mode. Uh, that was always active, even if you uh, change back to Sword and Shield. In this game, if you change back to Sword and Shield, Chainsaw Mode turns off, so you want to stay in Axe Mode. Another thing, it actually does the opposite of World. Instead of eating away at your uh, files slowly, it actually gains you files. So if you didn't notice, I'm in Chainsaw Mode and I'm not eating files, like, at all. Uh, I haven't been eating files at all. However, uh, say I do some files out, let's just, just blow some. So we, we lost two files there, right? If I actually hit in Chainsaw Mode and use the, the Buzzsaw part of it, Eventually, I will gain a file. Like I just did there. I just gained a file. Now I keep doing this. Now I have to get another file. And now this is where a lot of the uh, combos come in. Because you can infinitely keep up this. Uh, since X attacks do not use files and A attacks do use files, you can, uh, you can balance it out. Uh, and a very good balance is actually just X and A. This keeps you on infinite files. Quite easily at that. Because uh, the second, when you do Rise of Slash, it does uh, Element Discharge 2. And this causes you uh, to hit twice. So even though you're using a file, you're hitting twice with a value of one file. So you're getting a lot of file energy back pretty easily at that. You just uh, shield up and you can do that. This is where a lot of the uh, little intricacies with uh, the uh, switch skills merely melding together really well come in. Because, oops, if you use counter peak performance, first of all, you charge all your files, and you can enter condensed spinning slash immediately. This is the same for uh, condensed element slash using the sword. However, this is so much more useful because uh, you just went straight from. Guard into chainsaw mode, and this is this is especially useful. I would never take Axe Hopper when I'm picking uh, chainsaw mode because this combo works. Say you're in Axe mode, and you're doing stuff, doing stuff, doing stuff, right? And you're slapping away, and you, and you use this and morphing advance, and you, sl you slap away. Uh, and you, you now you're going around, but then suddenly you can't dodge, and you need to block. But unfortunately, you're in Axe Mode. What you do, counter peak performance, straight back into Condensed Spinning Slash. And you just filled your files, you guarded the thing you needed to block, and you're back in, you're back in Chainsaw Mode. You literally never left Chainsaw Mode. It's essentially like you never left Chainsaw Mode. If I do this and I fail, then yes, I leave Chainsaw Mode. Back to Sword Shield. Right? But this is usually the big issue with Chainsaw Mode, is that it's hard to enter and stay in. Or not stay in, but it's, hard, it's easy to stay in, but it's hard to enter uh, every time you leave, but you never have to leave if you just do this, unless you need to heal. This is where a lot of the uh, synergies come in with the uh, weapon stuff. And yeah, that concludes my head talk. <laughs> Why'd I change that? I usually use that loaded. Uh. Uh. Uh, I'm gonna get out of here. Let's see. Let's just head to see works. Okay, I'm tired. It's been three hours. Uh, do I have class tomorrow morning? I don't think I do.
My throat actually hurts from all the talking. Uh, also, guys, anybody who has an Adam's apple, um, is the top of your Adam's apple flat? Is this normal? Because I'm just running into this issue. Also, I'm not playing anymore. <laughs> I'm going to jump into chat room. Uh... Ouch. That throat kind of hurt. Hmm. Okay. Anyone have any questions? <laughs> Anybody have any questions? If not, I'm going to go search for someone to pop into. Um, what is that? What the fuck? Uh, what the fuck? Uh, that's, what? What is that? Okay, now I'm just actually, now I'm just legitimately confused. I'm looking at it. <laughs> uh, um, mm, uh, what? I'm looking at Ham right now. And Ham's got some weird weird image going on and I don't understand uh here one sec I'm gonna screenshot this what is this what what is this uh I gotta save that screenshot good what what is this save it uh no I don't want to Fucking what? <laughs> Do I have a screenshots folder? I actually don't. Uh, that's concerning. Uh, let's put save pictures. Uh... Alright, look at this, y'all. What is this? What is this? What the fuck is this? What is this? Right, guys, what is this? What, what? What is this? What? Huh? I'm just genuinely confused. What? What is this? What is this? What? Huh? Honey? I don't understand. What? I'm gonna. What? <laughs> hmm. I honestly have no idea. What is Tokyo up to? Doing another talk podcast? Another podcast? Wait, you got another, uh. Oh, well, that was quick. He, like, literally did one, like, a few days ago. Uh, and he did one again. Another one. That was, that was real quick. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't understand what I'm seeing right now. Honestly, I'm not sure if I want to understand what I'm seeing right now. Uh, this is that's silly. That's just uh, that's just a silly, silly one. <laughs> I'm honestly not sure what this is, and I don't know if I want to know. Do, do I jump in there? I don't think I jump in there. I kind of want to see what Toki's up to. I want to pop into Tokyo. Screw it. Come with me, one person in uh, chat. We're gonna we're gonna do a duo raid with them. You you me. We're gonna do this. Mostly because I need to keep my th throat. Uh, oh god, my throat. It's gonna die. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have uh, eaten like twenty cookies and uh, two donuts. You think that was a bad idea? Might have been a bad idea might have been a bad idea what do you think do you think eating 20 cookies and like two donuts uh all within like one sitting was a bad idea i'm gonna say yes it's probably <laughs> that's probably the case i'm gonna remove this image because uh it's a bit cursed okay go away i'm gonna delete it from my file folder Uh, I need to actually remove a few. Why do I have the milkman? You know what? I'll keep that one. 
delete this one. There we go. Okay, we're off now. Bye-bye.